<laughs> What's up, everybody? Hi, everybody. How's it going? Kevin Heffernan here. Steve Lemmy. Happy April Fool's Day. Oh, I guess, uh, yeah, April Fool's, right? Yeah. Oh, man, I should have I should have gotten you. You would have no you idea. You should have done a joke. You would have gotten me. I love April Fool's Day. Do you? Have you ever done big April Fool's pranks? Oh, great ones. Really? Yeah. Should we save this for another episode? Uh, Sure. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. you want to just tell me what your great prank is? No, no, well, let's save it. Okay, let's save it. April okay. Fool's. We'll do an April Fool's show. And it'll be a big joke. Yeah, it'll come out a week later. That's the, that's the fool part about it. Uh, but no, we had a great guest uh, today, um, and it's actually appropriate to our next thing here. Uh, we have Michelle Beadle on, who is the host of Sports Nation on ESPN2, <coughs> and um, uh, amongst many other things, many other things. And she was delightful, very delightful, wasn't she? Wonderful. Yeah. Super so, uh, psyched that she came on. She didn't have to. Didn't have to. She came from doing the recording her show, and she came by, and... And we've never met each other. I, I uh, you're Twitter friends. We're Twitter buddies, but still, yeah. that doesn't uh, mean you're obligated no. to come to somebody's podcast. But it was like we were old friends. I thought, yeah. all of us, yeah, for like, sure. Like we'll go out for beers or something. I'd go out for beers with, with Beetle, Beetle, right? I'd go have a couple brews with Beetle. Okay, but she uh, works in the sports world, and it's appropriate because I'm going to ask you. I'm going to tell you a few things right now. Honey. Okay, okay, okay. Now listen to me. Yeah, the wait is finally over. Thank goodness. Baseball season is here at last. You know that, right? Thank. Goodness. And the excitement continues all season long at DraftKings.com. Love DraftKings. Which is the official daily fantasy partner of Major League Baseball. Yeah. Uh, that's hardcore fantasy baseball, man. Fantasy baseball. 162 games, bro. T- requires some serious stamina. That's right. you got to care, right? But I'll tell you this. Daily fantasy means no season-long commitments. Okay? Instant, gra- instant cash gratification. Instant cash, instant gratification. I'm going to tell you what. What do you mean by that? I loved the da- I love the daily fantasy sports. Yeah, and this is good for baseball because it's like you don't have to do the 162 thing. You just zip in here. Yeah, think you got what it takes today? Do it. Yeah. Why wait until the end of the season to claim victory when you can be winning huge cash every day right now? At DraftKings, it's like a brand new season every time you play. Here's how you do it. You want to know how you do it, Kev? Can you tell me how you do it? All right. You select two pitchers, eight position players. You stay under your salary cap, and you could be on your way to an enormous play. Oh, payday. Or play day. Play day and payday. Last year, this dude, Pete, from Colorado, won a million bucks. I know that dude. You know Pete, the dude from I, Colorado? That was, a, that was a big story. Okay. He won a million bucks DraftKings in one day playing fantasy baseball. Yeah. He nailed it. I think I like this thing, because like, the, the baseball <clears throat> season is so long, it's hard to do fantasy. If I, but if I'm feeling it one day, yeah. I'll jump in here. If you have a little something in your gut that's telling you or the way something's going to go, yeah. There, here's like if I'm happy, I'm feeling good about my Yankees. If I'm feeling good about a Rod, then uh, I might jump in there. Sure, because okay. hundreds of thousands of fantasy sports fans just like you have already cashed in at DraftKings, and now it's your turn. So, hurry to DraftKings.com now. Enter promo code CHEW. C H E W. You got to enter that promo code so they know we sent you, and then you play for free. Man, if I go to that thing... For free? Katie, is this true? If I go to that thing, I will win a lot of money. You might. Do you know why? Why? Because I'm the defending champion of our fantasy oh, football brother. league two years in a row. Uh, okay. Two. All right. Before you uh, harp on that, let me just... For, hurry to DraftKings.com now. Enter promo code CHU to play for free. You could win part of the $300 million. $300 million? Where do they get their money? And prize is being awarded this season. Use the promo code CHU for free entry now at DraftKings.com. DraftKings.com. That's DraftKings.com. Okay. There you go. Hey, there you go. We got a little sponsor right there. Awesome. That's good. Okay. So listen. So we got that going. We got Beetle coming up. Let's talk real quick about uh, everyone's talking about this, our, our, our Indiegogo campaign. Yeah. Right? There's been a lot of buzz about it. The Super Troopers 2 thing. Yeah. And, um, you know, the, the campaign went up live uh, a week ago, mm-hmm. a little over a week ago. And um, we hit our first goal. We hit our first goal. So the first goal was if we had $2 million bucks, we know that we can make some sort of a version of the movie. And uh, the idea was to get hit that and then try to keep going so that the more we can raise the better movie we can make the more exciting movie to make the bigger movie we make right the better movie we the can better make. we make and so now we're uh we're over three million bucks right yeah and uh and we're still going we're gonna go for another till the end of the month we're gonna another 25 days or so right yeah yeah no we need uh listen folks here's the nice thing we're making super troopers that's great mm-hmm. and so thank you everybody who supported thank you us. so much thank you true crew members who supported us very really, humbling we really really appreciate it. we are yeah. overwhelmed with uh with the generosity um of course uh we want 
more because we want <laughs> we want it to be better. No, but yeah. like you know, it's uh, something we talked about in the in the first movie we made. Everybody commented on the opening scene and how great it was. Yeah, and you know that's something that's been weighing on our minds is can we top that? And we have a, an opening scene, but the opening scene that we have imagined <laughs> will basically cost <laughs> a little bit more than what we than what we have. Sure, sure. So. Yeah. Um, you know, that's why it's like, uh, we're, we're, we apologize if we seem piggish, um, <laughs> but we do need, uh, well, I mean, the nice thing is like, uh, uh, you know, this thing in, includes getting a ticket to see the movie and, you know, so it's not, it's like people get involved and they can see the movie. We are stuff, giving yeah. back. We have the, a special deal with Fandango. You can buy your movie ticket on, By through our website us, and right. we, and that money will actually go towards the making which of the movie, is good. which is great. Um, but, and so what we're going to do over these next couple of weeks is we're going to roll out some new new perks yeah we got some new fun events that we're going to stage and go to and you can join us at these various places and so if you check back uh super troopers to movie.com uh you can keep your eye on the campaign and and see when we add up these new prizes and uh you know we'll be putting up screenings and maybe there's a screen near you and we'll do some international screenings and we got all kinds of cool stuff yeah coming on uh, down the road over the next three weeks so um, if you've already uh, contributed, thank you very much. If uh, you haven't, come on board. And if you uh, also, if you have, tell your friends. You know, maybe they can jump on board too. And listen, we're not jerks. If you haven't and you can't, we love you. No oh matter God, what. you're still going to see this movie. You're going to see the movie. That's right. And uh, we realize it's your money. You're going out of pocket. If you can, great. If not, yeah. it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but um, just know it, it's all going to go to make it a funny movie. Yeah. So, so and so and once again, thank you for everyone who has supported us so far. Yeah. Um, all right, everybody. Let's stop groveling. It's uh, we've become <laughs> professional beggars at this point. I'm going to go out to the, the corner to p- the panhandle. <laughs> sure, get some get some spare change. Yeah, brother, can you spare a million? But in the midst of this campaign, we got an opportunity to sit down with Michelle Beadle. Fascinating. Who woman. was lovely and funny and and smart and, and knows her sports and cool. Yeah. Yeah, and so I think you guys are gonna like it. the two crews gonna like this, and then you can watch her on ESPN too yeah. every afternoon. Yeah, yeah. So Sports Nation, Sports Nation. All right, everybody. All right, thanks, folks. Enjoy, enjoy. Now entering Nerdist.com. True it with a guy named Kevin. True it and this other guy Steve. True it from the TV and the movies, and now this podcast straight. True it, they're gonna get you weak. True it, they might even get me. True it, but they're gonna get funky on this podcast thing. Good if you want to. It's fun to hear oh, uh, how good my voice is. Oh, yeah, look that's, at that. That's that's so good. Good. And how good really your good. voice is. Wow, it's that a little raspy, good? which I kind of like. Yeah, this is good. Oh, but yeah. isn't that like a that's like a something that you want? When I want when it, but I don't have it very often. Raspiness, yeah, the raspy yeah. voice. Like that's why that dude who was that uh, famous DJ in New York City, Wolfman Jack. No, the guy <laughs> we've been on his show a couple times, Jim Kerr. Jim Kerr. He would go out and smoke cigarettes. Oh my gosh! In his break, he would go down and smoke a cigarette so that his voice remained raspy while he was on the air. Right, mm, it's true. That's uh, that's an old that. school way of doing that's totally things. Totally old imagine. school. I know. I, know. I just uh, screamed all weekend and didn't sleep, so I figured you that's did? good enough. But it's only gonna last a you day. You probably have to protect your voice. No, come on. Why I'm not? not? A, I'm not on Broadway. I like, know, but it is awesome. your that's your tool. Actually, I would like my voice to change. I would like a. Ca- <laughs> you're right. Like a Kathleen. Although Kathleen Turner now is yeah. really low. Uh, she's like breathy, it was great too. in the day. Very breathy. I could never figure breathy. out Kathleen Turner because she, uh, in all the movies she was always in, she just played an American person. Right. And whenever I hear her interviewed in, in real life, she has this a strange accent. What happens to people? It's that Madonna accent. They just get it. It's is uh, Madonna's is maybe like a British, uh, like sort a, of. She has Michigan. Like, I thought it was Michigan. You know, yeah, it's a Mich- <laughs> Michigan by way of London. Yeah. Um, I feel you're right. It's like that weird affected. Old, like I almost feel like it's old money America, mm-hmm. yeah. that sort of way of talking. It's like, like uh, weird. Uh, the character of Mash Winchester is that kind of thing. Yeah, uh, like yeah. Li- <laughs> like blue blood, uh, like living <laughs> yeah. on the Gold Coast. Yeah, yes. exactly. Type thing. David Ogden steers. That's what we <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's introduce our, um, oh, our guest. Okay. Or should we chew first? This is exciting. Okay. I forget. But we gotta get her to chew. Okay. Chew. Yeah. Okay. So our podcast is called Chewing It. Right. Yeah. And we so always we start. We start. A lot of people don't like it, but. Because it's gross. It is yeah. kind of gross, but but then we make you chew by yourself. Okay. <laughs> Very nice. Yes. What were you chewing? That's what then popcorn. The, yeah. Ooh. Popcorn. <laughs> okay, so our our guest is a a, a, 
I, I wrote down like it, it, yeah. What did you write it, down? There's so many. I mean, like you do. You've done everything that there is to do. I try. Do. I get bored easily. You're a host, a reporter, a commentator. Yeah, right. But, but mean, a host of multiple, uh, multiple, uh, multiple things, genres. I feel right. like well, well, you you know, right like now, sports nation. Out, yeah, right now, like only sports. I tried okay. the entertainment thing. It wasn't great for me. Not a good fit. But I, you know, I try everything: travel shows, dog shows. But whatever. that's what I'm like, like there's stuff on here. Like you've been on every network, pretty much every genre. Yeah, you so, covered every sport. Yep. You started in bull riding. Bull riding. Yeah, which unbelievable. Is still a thing. It's still. Ha- I, I will say this: I think people assume if you're from Texas that you have you know everything about that world. But I didn't. <laughs> I didn't grow up with it. I didn't know anything about it. It's very. It's a very exciting thing to see live at least once. Yeah, it's sure. It's pretty scary. Yeah. Eight seconds. Eight seconds. And right? it seems like, any, like oh, anyone can do that. Okay. No. Right, first, let's say Michelle Beadle. Oh, Michelle right. Beadle. <laughs> yeah. Yay! <laughs> Beetle. I was just talking. <laughs> yeah. You seem like a like a last name. Like you like a bit of last people yes. call your last name, right? Yeah, Beetle. they do. Be- hey, Beetle. 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 It's well, weird. It's and a great I'm, last but name. But I like it. Yeah. On Twitter, people call you like Beads. Beads. You know what's great? It's even the one that's they hate my guts and they say horrible things and then they'll still be like beads. I'm like, no, 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 no. Yeah. You don't get to say <laughs> all these that. things and then that. say beads. <laughs> right. Now, and then you get to do you can do play on your name. Yeah. Like, didn't you you had a show or something called like the podcast, right? Yeah, I've done one. I've done one now. Um, you know, six month build up. Okay. Dead one, so it'll yeah. be another six months. So I'm, yeah, <laughs> you'll, you'll, okay. I'll be bothering you. Okay. Um, yeah, and okay. I think we're calling it Beatlemania. I feel okay. like it's sort of just why not? Yeah, it's like a thing. It's easy. It's a it's great a name. Given. Beatlemania is fantastic. It's yeah. good, right? Yeah, it's great marketing. You got a good name, Beetle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Thanks, Listen, Dad. <laughs> I, as as uh, Kevin, now I have to tell you, as yes. a person who also has a last name that can be played with, Lemmy, right, Lemmy, right. I have to say, way to go, Beetle. It's good. It's yeah. good, right? Yeah, yeah it feels My good. My poor brother. Yeah. He's like, that's mine. I'm like, no, I'm sorry. Mm. You should have done something first. Yeah. <laughs> I own it. It's your trademark. That, sorry, so. buddy. Yeah, there you do. Um, so, like, you know, it's funny because on your Twitter, actually, what I have noticed is, is people just attack sometimes. Yeah, it's weird. Like, I get attacked, but I mean, you have. Really? What do they say to you? Uh, some people tell me all I do are poop jokes. And? <laughs> <laughs> That's not an attack. That's, how, that's what Michelle that's said. That's what Beetle did? Yeah. The, I don't remember, like, how. I think you tweeted something funny. Yeah, how funny. did it happen? You tweeted something, and somebody retweeted it. And I was like, oh, that's a funny tweet. And God. I followed you. Yeah. And then I don't Poop remember jokes. what. It's like, I, of course, like, just insinuated myself into your life. And you said something to the fact of, like, oh, well, you know, you're going to have to take time from doing your poop jokes. <laughs> And then I sent you a picture of me with a uh, drinking tea <laughs> out of a cup, and I said, "Look, I'm keeping it classy or something yes, like that." Yes, with a pinky. Yeah, and then like a few days later, you started tweeting out like all these photos of a fake fake poo, poo. fake poo. I did a hashtag <laughs> fake poo for a while. I think it was over a Christmas break. Did someone give you that gift or something? Yeah, or? and I don't even remember where I got it, but huh. somebody gave it to me, and I took it home over the holidays, and I just put it places, and you know, and then of course, <laughs> oh, grow up. That's my favorite thing in the world. Grow sure. up. Sure. Yeah. No. Nah. Not gonna nah. happen. But I, I don't want to. I sent her a tweet. I was like, you know, by the way, <laughs> so, and since the time we've become Twitter buddies, I haven't ever made a poop joke. It's true. And then now, so here's so here's but originally that's what you accused him. Of, I know, right? but okay. I but I like poop jokes. Okay. I like fart jokes. Sure, me too. That's never going to not be funny. That's oh, right. Yeah. That's right. So okay. So then the other day when I had asked Michelle to be on the show, yeah, and. Um, <laughs> I said, here's my phone number. Right, right, right. I had also, like, there was a dude who I had also uh, said, hey, here's my phone number. He's so, giving it out. Yeah. So I got a text. Yeah. Uh, oh, this this thing's cheap. I give my phone number to everybody. <laughs> so I get a text that says, I only eat shit. Pieces of shit for breakfast. And here's my number. And I wrote, is this Rob? Assuming it was the dude. And she said, Michelle Beadle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and here she is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so you do yeah. like poo jokes? I like poo jokes. They're funny. They're always funny, no matter always what's funny. happening. Yeah, They're funny. Uh, do you have that book? Uh, what's your poo telling you? <laughs> yes, it's a great book. It's a great book. I mean, you know, if you're a little bit of a hypochondriac or worrier, things can play with your minds. But mm-hmm. yeah, where they have like describe it, and I watch a lot of Doctor Oz. He's obsessed with it as well. Is he really? Oh my god! Okay. Every show is basically about how to have the greatest poo ever. <laughs> yeah, okay. well, and like, it does tell you things. It does. And when I have one that's, you know, off the beaten path, right. <laughs> <laughs> I will consult my, because our book is right, it's right there oh on my, the toilet. No, no, no. I was like, wait, I'm looking behind yeah. me. Go, no, it's, yeah, no, it's behind that's actually me smart. <laughs> on the toilet. It's just right here. I pull it out and I consult it and say, what's, and you know, it usually has it right. So, oh, yeah. Right. And so that's how usually. you guys came to know each other then. Poo. I mean, it's pretty. <laughs> Poo brought us together. It's yeah. pretty that's awesome. crazy. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, wait, weren't you on a plane together or okay, something? Okay, yeah. So then, you I don't guys? know if you remember this. Wait, I don't remember this. Super Bowl Sunday. Okay. I was flying. Oh yes. Okay. Now listen, I just want to say this. I'm I'm 
sacrificing a lot by telling this story right now because and you're going to know why in a second. Oh god. But okay. I could accuse Beetle of the same thing right now. Oh, leaving on the Sunday? Well, yeah. But yeah. we well, yeah, I was flying from uh, uh Miami to Los Angeles on Super Bowl Sunday. I'd been at a wedding. Ugh. And I had my wife had made the plane reservations because I had I had told her to, but literally whatever whatever about this, it it just tickles Kevin so much to the point of anger. <laughs> And he doesn't stop giving me well, shit just, about it. You know, part of my thing was you let your uh, you let the you let your wife make the uh, arrangements, right? She schedules the flight at the same time as the Super Bowl. Yeah, uh, yeah. the same time as the Super Bowl. You could have flown any time that day. So this is oh, it's right during the game. Yeah, during the game. Okay. Yeah, but you know what? Okay. You were on the same well, plane. Well, we stopped. We stopped. Somebody in, made you fly. Which, in. I know. I'm trying to remember why though. Like, why would I have I done picked, that? We picked you up in Phoenix. My flight, which is where the Super Bowl was, right? Right. Were you at the Super Bowl? Yes, that's right. No, no, because it I, hadn't started yet. No, no, no. So I, this is, I went to do. We weren't there. Like for my show, for ESPN wasn't okay. wasn't there that week. Okay. But you know, Super Bowl week is a week when you can go do all these like appearances and make money and just sure, sort of yeah, hang yeah, out. yeah, yeah. Um, so I did that, and my uh, my plan is always to get home for the Super Bowl. Yes. Like, I don't want to be there, and I don't want to fly Monday morning after the Super Bowl because mm-hmm. that's yeah. the worst day at any airport. Yeah. So I was cutting it close on this one because I had to host a tailgate at the stadium. And then try to make, I think it was like a 345 flight or some sort of close. Right. I got home though in time before, I got home before halftime, which was okay. great. Yeah, well, that was the thing is that like people, first of all, a they lot of people kill you. came on that plane. But no, they had the, they had, uh, um, you know, tablets with. That's the new thing though, yes. Yeah. I mean, the, you can actually watch this rule on the plane. The guy mm-hmm. next to me had a tablet and he gave it to me. Really? And put the Super Bowl on his phone to watch it there because he wanted to hear the sound and he wasn't getting the sound is on the tablet. Is this like a hero of some sort? I guess so. For some reason. Who is this guy? He was amazing. But I was uh, I was like That's in the right. third or fourth row and you came on. Now, we hadn't met yet and I wasn't going to be like, hey. Yeah, I know because I remember you afterwards. I was like, why didn't you say anything? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, also because I didn't, you know, my wife isn't on Twitter and I wasn't sure I wanted to explain to her like she's one of my Twitter uh, <laughs> buddies. And, uh, but did you run off? Like I ran off. The whole thing timed out perfectly because, oh, so yes, we, we uh, landed right before halftime, mm-hmm. and the halftime is 45 minutes. For me, though, it was like I was listening to the third quarter. Yep. We had checked bags. I was listening to the third quarter. Oh, see, I didn't do that. Yeah. I shipped stuff home, so I didn't have to it's deal so with it. It's so smart. Yeah. Smart. I was yeah. like, I got to get off this plane. Smart. <laughs> She's smart. <laughs> see? She I, knew. I always travel on Super Bowl Sunday. That, it's, you do? It's the key, yeah. If because you, can, of, you can get out early. It's great. But. Okay. I think I've flown once, but not during the uh, not during the. I've gone to the Super Bowl, but I drove to the Super Bowl. Oh, see, that's good, too, if you can do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Super Bowl 25. Giants over the Buffalo Bills. Mm-hmm. Norwood, right, right? Right, okay. right. <laughs> I, think you know, I think you know that Super Bowl, right? I do know that Super Bowl. <laughs> I think you know that Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, you're also, by the way, you're also an actress. No, I'm not. Well, you were in the Bridgestone commercials. Oh, that's true. I did. That counts. Look, she, well, was, I did she, say, she was indignant I, for a I second I did say there. one line. Basically, in every commercial, the exact same. So, <laughs> it's like every Nailed time it this awesome. Wait a minute. Nailed I it. also read something just now that you were going to be in Sharknado 3. I'm the opening scene. I was supposed to do it with, I forget who I was supposed to do it. I think Mike Tyson or something. Okay. But something Did happened Did they film there. it already? Or no? Yeah, I already filmed my part. You filmed it? Yeah. Sergeant. Okay. Um, no, Sharknado Sergeant. 3 over here. Yeah. Agent Beetle. Argyle. I just, I basically begged. I mean, I literally begged you did. to do it. Yeah, I did like a hashtag campaign. I was like, I would just want to get in this. And this thing is full of crazy cameos. So, I mean, it was it was awesome. I, th- wow. I think I had a line, but I don't know if it'll make so it. So you, you 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 said something in the movie. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm basically uh, driving Ian Ziering to the White House. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Of course. Okay. What, why, what Do you have I? a character name? Or uh, Agent Argyle. Oh, Agent Argyle. <laughs> yeah. That's a good name. So it says Argyle on your... Actually, no, I'm wearing Secret Service, so I have, like, black suit, okay. earpiece. Argyle was the driver in uh, Die Hard. Die Hard, yeah. Maybe that's Maybe the that's reference. what the... Yeah, I mean, yeah. This, this thing is, like... They cranked this thing out in 14 days. Oh, they did? So many cam... Uh, it's, it's an impressive little machine they put together. Wow. I will say that. Did you I interact know. with any sharks? Um, no. So you're not in the NATO? <laughs> no. I, I live... My, uh, Max and Marcellus, who do the show with me, both die. They get scenes and they both die. Okay. They okay. Eat my so I could be in four. Yeah. yeah, I oh, think, I think so. Okay. I think it's pretty bad for them. Okay. Did you give Marcellus Wiley shit about <laughs> being on Million Dollar Matchmaker? Oh, yes. He did that somewhere in between the time I was at ESPN the first time and then came back because I remember watching it going, what is he doing? What was he? Do- what did he do? What he was, was like the millionaire. Oh, he was? It's one of those Bravo up. shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That you love? That up with everyone loves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it, it is funny because it's like my wife just watches Bravo. Right. It's and I'll come in. I'll be like, which fucking show is this? <laughs> right. Now? Right. And then before I know it, my ass is already on the couch. <laughs> right. And it's I'm, so good. And your mouth's open, and you're like, watching. there's some compelling stuff on there. I know. I'm. Sure, I know. Yeah. You, you, I hate watch all of it. 
all of that stuff. You hate just, watching, I hate yeah, watching. Yeah. I'm just like, it's why am I watching? Like and it's the worst on like a Saturday or Sunday when you really have things you should be doing. Mm-hmm. I find myself just wasting four yeah, hours. You caught up yeah. watching this. Oh yeah, I say the same thing every time about all the housewives. I'm like, oh, these are the worst people in the world. Why does the anybody worst. fucking watch this? The show? worst. And then you do. Oh, and I'm not, like Brandy Grant Glanville. She's a fucking train wreck. What's, What's wrong with that shit? lady? God, I would choke her too. Oh. I know. We're like, I hate this so much, but God, what is her problem? <laughs> yeah. Why does she keep throwing? And by the way, That's who the are these people? Like, I'm almost forty, and I've never thrown a drink in public. Sure. I've never screamed and cried the way these people do in public. Yeah. Like. This seems to be a common occurrence amongst housewives. Yeah, well, and the, and the Beverly Hillsons are supposed to be the classiest uh, ones uh, yeah. of all, and they're the, they're the most gangsta of all. They of them. really are. They throw down. They, they, yeah, Glanville's kind of you know. Glanville's trashy. She's a little bit of something. But like this season, there's been some like wine glass breaking yeah. and uh-huh. some fisticuffs. But don't you think that's for the camera a little bit? I don't know. Man. I don't know. I mean, I mean Lisa otherwise Rinna, people will do it more often, right? I feel like Lisa Rinna still sort of has like a career. So I don't. I, sure. Sometimes I don't really understand. I understand why some people do it. I don't yeah. understand why others do it. Right. Yeah. Does that make sense? And like Harry Hamlin, what's he think about all this? Uh. Sure, sure. <laughs> and okay, but which leads us back to our original thing, right. Marcellus Wiley. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, okay right. yeah, 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 yeah. So, so he showed up. Now you'll find this interesting because yeah. uh, this is in a previous season. But the current season, though, uh, Candace Smith, right, our friend, yeah, is the assistant to the Million Dollar Matchmaker. Okay. Oh yeah, okay. I like her. Okay. Yeah, she She's was in great. Beer yeah. Fest and she did a couple of her movies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, anyway, so he showed up as the millionaire to get set up on all these dates. God. Did he find true love? Well, not on that show. I've known Marcellus now for quite a few years, and he's been engaged a few times during that. But he finally married this awesome chick, and she's pregnant, and I feel like she's she's strong. She's a, an anesthesiologist, which is okay. way off the path of what I was used to as far as all that was concerned. So right. I was like, oh, this chick's got her own thing. She doesn't really need you. Like, yeah. this is... And she's 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 like six feet tall. Okay, yeah. she's so he didn't meet her through this no. thing. Okay, no, I don't okay. know if he. I feel like everyone hits on Patty when they get on that show too. Like well, a lot she, of the guys do. Well, because she, I thought, made herself available to him. I felt like it, right? Yeah, she's like, the vibe. look at you. You're in my wheelhouse. Oh my honey. god! And then she does that <laughs> creepy thing with her eyes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I don't like her. She's gonna devour him. <laughs> yeah. All right, so the current show you do, though, is Sports Nation. Yeah. Right? And that's on ESPN2 in the afternoons. Yep. It's like a kind of entertainment meets sports. Yeah, it's just wacky. uh, Bright colors, lots of noises. Our demo is like 15, which is awesome. Yeah, yeah. That's why we like to make timely references like, you know, Citizen Kane and things like that. (laughs) What are we talking about? Yeah. Like, stop saying bad things. But I I just only know old music and all that, so I'm sort of always feeling like, oh. And you guys shoot it every day? Uh, yeah, Monday through Friday. Did you shoot today? I did. That's why I have all this makeup on. Otherwise, wow. I would not have all this Okay. Makeup. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And, okay. and your mom's in town. My mom's in town from Italy, um, so she's hanging out with these five dogs at my house, okay. which, let's be honest, I'm not in a huge rush. Wait, did you yeah. grow Crazy. up in Italy? I was born there, but I only, we went back for summers, but okay. I didn't really grow up there. Okay. Spent you speak Italian? Enough to get by. I understand it. Your mom must speak Italian. Yeah, oh yeah. Like English is her third language, so it's like she's got a thick accent. Okay, yeah. really. That's thick. excellent. Yeah, she's tiny. Did you? So was she like? Uh, was she learning English when you were yeah, born? We were. No, she was learning it. No, not at all. Actually, she and I basically learned English the same time. Like right around the time I start to speak and read and do all that stuff, she's learning it with me. Okay. So, so you didn't speak bond. Italian first, then? No. no okay. I didn't. I didn't really get Italian until like. Sometime around 13, and I just okay. sort of started understanding it. Okay. She never taught us. She had this weird theory. Spaghetti. I know, spaghetti. She thought we would have accents. I don't know why. We wouldn't have had accents. Did you hear your mom's accent when you were growing up? No, and I used to get so angry at my friends when they were like, what did your mom say? I'm like, what do you mean, what did my mom this say? This is the funny thing, because his dad is from Argentina. And it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Same did you thing. get mad? I've, well, I've told this story. My friend's yeah. mom walked in one time and said, Stephen, there's a uh, man with a very thick Spanish accent on the phone. And I was like, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, he wants to talk to you. I was like, who is it? And she's like, it's your dad. I was like, my dad doesn't have an accent. That is hilarious. And uh, but then, and I didn't hear it until I was seventeen years old. Yeah. And I was at a wedding, and he was speaking at the wedding, and I was like, <laughs> oh my fucking god! Like, <laughs> did, like did a bee sting his tongue? Like you can't even <laughs> understand this dude. You know, like he's fresh off the boat. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Did yeah, you have I don't hear it. I don't. Well, I always would have it, and I would get yeah. very, very frustrated with them. Like, well, she asked you if you were hungry. What? How do you not understand that she's speaking English? Right. And the funny thing is, my mom, you know, because she learned it, spoke better English grammatically than any of my idiot friends back sure, then. Sure, <laughs> so sure. it was just sort of like, okay, now you're starting to make me angry. Now I kind of get it. I'm like, oh, okay, I could see why you're having 
some problems. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. But it still makes me angry. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I mean, I, I love that, by the way. Like, the first time I heard it when I was 17. Yeah. Oh, it's true. <laughs> because also, the speech he was giving included uh, the word Yahweh. He was talking about God. And so he was wow. saying Yahweh. And I'd never heard the word Yahweh either. <laughs> so every time I'd say, he'd say Yahweh, I'd be like, this fucking foreign <laughs> dick. <laughs> Like what an <laughs> asshole! And then afterwards, like I, it was like, you know, my personality is uh, I like to tease. Sure, you know, it's an Italian sure. thing. It's an Argentinian thing. Absolutely, sure. yeah. Like we're Italian, but you know, it's, it's how we show you we love you. It's yeah. true. Yeah. And so I was going to show him by roasting him in front of like the entire wedding, and I was like, like Dad, you're a fucking asshole. Like, what's Yahweh? <laughs> I was the asshole. Poor right. guy. You were the asshole. I was the asshole. I didn't. Hey, like wondering if you're on drugs. Like why all of a sudden you've noticed this? You know what? That was the crazy wedding with the crack. Yeah, with the crack. Wedding. Right, <laughs> crack wedding. I wasn't on drugs. Wait, but real crack? It's such a long story. What? But yeah. <laughs> the long and the short of it is though, I was put at a table with a family. Yeah. And then we were. Uh, they wound up. Uh, we went to. They an were after the party. outlier family. Yeah. They were oh, the. Lord. They were the random family at the wedding. Yeah. And I was not having a good time. And then my par- my parents went out with the adults, and I went back to this house basically, and they all lit up some crack real crack yeah real crack well that's like that's, that's not, crazy that's real not crack. funny just the kids, <laughs> crazy just the kids and then their parents came home and i was like put the crack away put the crack away put the crack. and they don't put the crack away and the dad comes up and he goes how was it and the, and the kid's like it's awesome and the dad starts smoking crack and then oh my, my parents God. come home and i'm like what? God, right it was crazy it's like uncle eddie but it's like a horror worse. movie it's yeah like a horror movie it's like, really bad it's like the stepford wives it's terrible shit going on it's terrible what crack the i've never seen crack. crack that's a little bit insane me, to me. Yeah. Yeah. Me i feel very innocent right never now never seen it never smoked it <laughs> yeah. i've seen it but not smoked it. okay man uh, yeah. so you grew up in texas then yeah okay yeah, yeah. Where? small Where? towns in texas um Dallas for a minute, and then this little town outside of San Antonio called Bernie. Okay, which is okay. Remember we small. we did a show outside of San Antonio. Remember that at the Where'd college? You do it? Yeah, yeah. Oh. college out there, and it was the scariest drive in my <laughs> fucking. Life. Remember that because we were driving. Oh, it was yeah. a, a middle of the night. Yeah, we had to drive back from that place. I think you're back to San Antonio or back to. I don't camera, Houston maybe? Yeah. And we were on this road oh. and it was foggy and they were like, you should be careful because the deer yeah, or whatever. Locked. And we were like driving and there were deer everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and it was foggy so you didn't see them and it was too late and then you see their eyes. Yep. Well, was, that was, that the, was thing. the most terrifying drive I've you ever had. You knew the deer was coming when all of a sudden you'd be like, there, you'd see, you'd see two glowing so eyes quick. Yeah. and then they're in front of the car. Yeah. We were terrified. No, yeah. it's, they're, they are a I mean, they're beautiful, but they're a pain. The only time I ever hit one is it actually hit me, and it's exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. I was in a car, my window was down, and this thing runs right into my window. Its head is right at my face. It knocks the rearview mirror off, and I'm just like, okay. That's crazy. That just, ha- that just happened. All right. I thought well, we were going to die. On. It's unbelievable. Yeah, there's that a area lot. is just deer. Yeah. A lot. I'm not, I'm not a deer uh, person. <laughs> <laughs> I know, you don't like deer? I know a lot of people love deer, and they're a sacred animal. Yeah, but yeah. Like, they're so cute, though. You know what, though? I, I thought that when I was a kid. You but, don't like them now? Well, I've had too many. I mean, first of all, the tick thing is, is well, yeah. okay. became an issue for me. Okay. It's not romantic. Okay, no. right. And then it's like there have been so many times uh, deer, like there was one time I was driving back from a wedding and it was like we drove by <laughs> and the deer was coming at the car. Whoa, like and chicken. And we drove past it. And then in the rearview mirror, another car hit the deer. Oh, I hate that. Right. And then it was like the deer like spun around and everything. Oh. I was like, Jesus. Mm-hmm. Like, you they're put fences everywhere. Up. You put fences up, man. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> Even they'll jump them. I know. Were you a, uh, were you a big sports uh, fan when you were a kid? Yeah. I mean, I grew up, my dad took me to games. I did, you know, not to the point where I thought I would do this for a living yeah. or anything like that, but I mean, I've always loved Texas him. Texas teams I like what? Sports. Like the Spurs um, and that kind of stuff, right? Well, the Spurs, Spurs is my, yeah. That's that, it. Hands since down? I was 12. Yeah, okay. hands down. That one, it's never changed. Tim Duncan's been on that team since you were 12, Pretty right? much, yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's Just been around. It seems like it. Do you know who else loves the San Antonio Spurs? Who? My dad. We, God, Mono I love Ginobili. your dad, of course. Well, the Argentinian. Because of Ginobili? Yeah. Yeah. That's why he loves him? Well, and he's great most of the time. Yeah, but like. But he's from Argentina. That's the whole point. Yeah. That's the whole thing, and that was the problem. He loves the Pope and Ginobili. <laughs> you know what? Argentinian. That's okay. Yeah, sure. You could Do pick you, worse. Let me tell you something, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> when that Pope, like Argentina, does not have a lot to go on these days. Right. Sure. Okay. When that guy became the Pope, right? They cried in the streets. I'm my sure father they did. cried. I'm my father's sure a religious he did. man. Oh, he goes to yeah, church. Of course. What about when the Spurs won the uh, championship? Did he cry? I cried then. He, yeah. he, he was. He well, because they were playing the Heat, and my wife was from Miami. Yeah. And so they were like, <laughs> "Oh, my wife sent." A photo. It was some meme 
of Ginobili's oh, head, right? Bald head, and like there was some <laughs> clever, clever thing about like uh, there was a play on words about the baldness. Yeah, okay. I remember okay. a lot. I can't I can remember that okay. one. There were a few. But t- my, my wife sent it to my dad, and my dad got offended by it. Oh, really? And That's then awesome. Came How dare back you? at my wife. How dare you? Yeah. Something like How that. How dare you? <laughs> Look, check out this uh, scoreboards. <laughs> that's all. That's all you, that's have, all to you have to say. Um, check out the banners. Tim yeah. Duncan, overrated in <laughs> no. history or underrated? Underrated. In history? underrated. Okay. underrated okay. Because uh, with the exception of honestly, this last year was the first time I have noticed a huge bandwagon swell of fans that I don't think were ever Spurs fans. Like yeah. it, for as long as I've been a fan, especially that I can remember, it was just a team that you were had to be from there to root for. Otherwise, sure. you were like, ugh, they're boring. But they were. I mean, love. I mean, they were. They were, but people yeah. called them boring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, fundamental. Sure. It's boring. They're like the, the Pete Sampras of basketball. Basically, right. yes. Yeah. But this last year, I remember I went to a Clippers game like a month or two ago, and I saw more Spurs jerseys and T-shirts, and yeah. it was very bizarre. Yeah. I've never seen that. Yeah. I like it. Do you think they call them Spursies? Maybe. <laughs> Spursies. They should. Spurs. They should. If you, not, You can we take are. that with you to Spur- San Antonio. Um, What's up, my Spursies? Yeah. Yeah. Tim Duncan or David Robinson? I take Tim. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But it's like, yeah. Okay. Again. Those were good days, though. Those were great days. I mean, I don't, they didn't win the championship with those two guys, right? They never did. They no. Did. It was no, after 90, Robinson 99 left. was the... Well, no, no, no. no, no, did, no, no. Did, Dave Robinson did? was 99. Okay, and Avery okay, Johnson, okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. And then he retired. Okay. The, the guns. Yeah. He's still around. He's almost at every he game. Oh, my God. He's in he's yeah. a commercial campaign. Have you watched that? I was he's so happy uh, to see that. The cheesy stuffed crust. He has not Well, you know what? So we were live tweeting along with Super Troopers this week on Comedy Central. And I did... I pulled the claws out and I was like, looks like... Oh, stop. Dave Robinson's been eating a little too much of the cheese. Oh, oh no, you, can't you call it that, didn't. And that guy's a and national institution. And he's ripped. Yeah. He is ripped. Yeah. His arms ripped. are out of like marble. Yeah. yeah. It's always been that way. Crazy. Yeah. And he's a nice guy too. Yeah. I know Just like Duncan. What Listen, is wrong with you? The Spurs, I don't know. <laughs> you're such a dick, I don't know, from Argentina. <laughs> I don't believe in you. You were trolling on the internet, making fun of David. I know, Robinson. I know what you're doing. Listen, I was. By the way, I will say though that they are the classiest team in the NBA. For sure, they're, they're sure. the one team that has never like been uh, about showboating or. Yeah, you know, we had sure. Dennis Rodman for like ten minutes, and they're like, yeah. "Nope, that's not gonna work. Get yeah. out." But it all comes from Popovich, though, doesn't it? T- completely. The that's guy why. is just. I love him, but yeah. I'm also a, a dry sort of jerky kind of personality. Yeah, and so I, that's probably why I love him so much. But he is. Very sarcastic, very dry. He's there for a reason. And then, you know, we've seen the soft side, which is weird that the world got to see that. But yeah. love the dude. Yeah, sure. Those guys I mean, love him. So He's proven himself, obviously. Yeah. 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 Uh, what about your baseball team? What is it? I used to – I went to a lot of Astros games growing okay. up. But I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. I haven't watched – I mean, I went to a Dodgers game because the tickets were free. But I haven't watched baseball, and I can't tell you how long. Since you my, went for the S Network. Yeah, what about the Yankees? Yeah, my attention span is zero. I hated really? the Yankees when I was there. You su- shut up. I did. Well, they you were, shut up. They were not a fun organization to deal with. Well, I'm Let sure. Let me just put it in perspective. They're okay. very controlling, right? We did a – yes. I, right. We did a show – Called Yankees Ultimate Road Trip. Right. That's how right. I loved it. Right. Yeah. Okay. Now, yeah. Four people Follow give up a year country. of their life right. to go to every. Right. Do you know that we were never allowed to use footage on that show? And From we were games? on. Yeah. That's, uh, there's a reason why terrible. everything was stills. <laughs> that's terrible. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, guys, we're on the. We're, okay. I feel that same way about Kids on Deck, though, too. Did Kids on Deck, do they get to use? Probably not. And that was I hosted that by Steinbrenner's granddaughter for like a while. Right. I don't get it. Right. I don't get it. They're, it's but you know what everything's cyclical and now they're horrible so they're gonna need the media. Da, 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 da. It's gonna be weird. They're not horrible. It's different We're when big you need it. Fans, yeah, though. but it's different when you need the media. When you didn't need them for like a decade, you could be mean. But, but they now, created their own network. They don't need yeah. the media. And now, did you see they're doing videos of like the guys in the outfield reenacting Sam? Loved that. What Yankee I team is this? I loved it. I loved it. Come on, <laughs> this is the, the guy's doing a scene it's, from it's the, the Sandlot. Cha- it's the change. It's that was the great. Change. I don't know whose idea it was, but you know that was you know. I don't either. Actually, did you see that? Where they did a it was some really lot. great acting. It. Well, that was the that was the charming part of it, right? They had charming. McCann was playing the kid with the gla- the fat Gardner kid, was and Gardner's terrible, painfully he's, horrible because he's he's st- he's a stiff anyway. Which I guess was actually kind of funny. Yeah, yeah, uh, but that's a that's a brand new Yankees. I don't recognize that Yankees. Yeah, it's well, interesting. I guess so. But I, they have to they have to figure it out. They got to reinvent themselves yeah. a little bit. Now you got to be a little nicer. Um, how's Michael K? As awesome. A guy. Awesome. Okay. Like I love Michael K. I do too. He gets a bad. That's a guy who gets a lot of haters too. First of all, it's New York, and we, we well because he's a, he's a homer. He's that's a homer. Fine. But it's that's the greatest. Uh, it's the greatest team in the history of the I mean, world. I so. I don't know where why people still don't get it. Like if you're the call, you call that that team. Yeah. You're usually a homer. Right. It's not a national broadcast. That's why they're that you're there. Right. But like, will, it's so crazy to me. I will say this, and I have always found this to be about the New York City media. Yeah. Um, you know the New York Rangers broadcasters, um, Michael K, is that they actually they do a very good job of being objective. 
You know, like you, if you, yeah, if I you can't watch even it, watch the Angels local. That's guys. what I mean. Oh, really? Do it. Yeah. So I was like, oh, come on, yeah, what a terrible call. <laughs> well, because, I, well, because also I think I feel like the Yes Network, or even this is the same way with the, like with Jerry Remy with Boston, or whatever. It's like the Yes Network at least it has people with uh, knowledge and they're sure. providing knowledge throughout the game. As opposed to just talking about random shit. I mean, well, let's be honest. The Yankees, you either love them or hate them, yes. too. So whoever's attached to that is going to receive some of that. Sure. Well, you were attached to them and you hated them. Yeah, I just didn't. I just didn't. I don't know. I didn't like the way things were done or how they felt. Sure. It just sort of it's felt like we're taking, yeah, we're taking everything way too seriously. Yeah. Like, that's this baseball. Sure. The other thing I found out about. We're treating it like a product. Yeah, it's yeah. weird. But, you know, they, they seem likable now. Maybe it's a whole they new are. game. I mean, the, mm. the, the other weird thing about Michael K to me was, and you worked on this radio show, mm-hmm. right? Because um, there was a while where it was on Sirius out here, and I was able to listen to it, and then oh. they pulled it. Oh, but um, that's not good. The weird thing is that Michael K. I feel like has a very different personality on his radio show than he does on the TV. Yes, like in the radio show, he's much more of a wise ass, also much more confrontational. Which is him. Which is him. Yeah, yeah. And he, which I think I he holds that back on the on the network broadcast of right. the TV sh- of the games. But I, I think th- you're more. He has to be Yankees. Yes. Whereas on the radio, Pleasing he gets to, to be himself. Right. Right. And so, yeah, oh, yeah, the Michael K. I know is like he's very dry. Yeah. Um, just, a, just a very sort of New York attitude, yeah. for lack of a better way of putting it. And I, you know, I consider him a friend forever. He's great. Yeah. You know who Lemmy's favorite oh, God. New York uh, oh, I sports hope this is... Yankees oh, no, don't... broadcaster? Oh. Let's see if Michelle can guess. Okay. Wait, no, this is. Former player? No. Oh, Quite God. the opposite. Is it Quite... Sterling? No. no, no. Close. Okay. <laughs> close. No. Wait. What's her face? Yeah. <laughs> Susan Waldman. Susan yeah. Waldman. He's He's Waldman. Waldman. He has a crush on Susan Roger Waldman. Roger Clemens. I do. Uh, yeah. Roger, Cl- Roger Clemens. <laughs> and then when, like, when she would uh, interview um, Mariano Rivera, like, yeah. she definitely had the hots for Mariano. Yeah. Your I, theory was they had a little sexual thing going on. I, they definitely did. Right? Wow. Because there was so, a sexual like tension. Well, when yeah. Mariano would do interviews with everybody else, yeah. he would just, you know, he'd do the interview, he's a cool guy, but like when Susan Waldman, he would like give it, give it to her, you know? Really? Oh, yeah, he'd be like, and you know, as Susan, what I'm talking about. Oh, you know? no, like, I'm going to have to go watch yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, he, there was something between them. Yeah. She doesn't do that anymore. She isn't, she's, she's the radio. She well, does yeah. the job. But that upset yeah. me. That upset me because she was, she was knowledgeable. And she's, I was upset that they took oh, her off. Oh, she's Susan for Walmart. sure knowledgeable. Yeah. Yeah. Love her. That's without a doubt. I, I, it, it baffled me why they took her off the air. I, I could only Well, they assume... moved her. That's an upgrade. They moved her into the radio booth as the... as the She's a woman doing play-by-play. Yeah. Sure, but... I she, mean, doing, doing color. She's doing color. Yeah, but she was... She's doing pioneer. play-by-play. She's a pioneer. Yeah. I mean, come on. I, I'll, I'll you could argue that she's doing all the work if you really wanted to. Like she's doing a lot of work. Oh on yeah, that broadcast. Yeah. yeah, I mean Sterling's just like a pretty voice. You know what I mean? He's yeah. just got he, like fun calls. He says the same thing over and over again. Right. It's always the same notes or whatever. Yeah, but I like the problem is I liked looking at her. True. Wow, I, true. I liked well, looking at true. Susan Waldman. Well, she because she had a, a very well, she had a made over. She had a makeover at one point. Like she, she was a little more kind of like gritty, and then yeah. at some point somebody made her over. I feel like that happens which is all funny. the time. But that to was every single person on television. Yeah, at some point. But I preferred her. Oh, I actually preferred both versions of her because like. I liked it was the bag of rocks phase where like respectfully I thought like sh- she looked you know it was like her you know like, she, she, like she, went, a little she went drinking she went drinking the night before she went drinking the night before her, her like wig even though she may or may not have worn it was like <laughs> a little bit I don't think it was a wig <laughs> And then she got a makeover, and it was like kind of like when Susan Boyle got her makeover. Oh. You know, and you're like, oh, that's sweet. Bless it's her sweet. Heart. It's sweet. It's right. sweet. You know? Right. No, that's true. And she that made me true. uncomfortable. Susan Boyle makeover. I know. By the way, somebody at this table has oh, played God. Susan Boyle in a uh, live television <gasps> sketch. Live. Uh, I have. I so have. somebody yeah. at this table. <laughs> I, yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. come clean. It was me. It and was. how did you crush it? Uh, I think I, I did like all right. He crushed it. I think I did all right. He crushed it. Kind of a British. It's like a British accent type of thing. Whatever. We did. We did a version of. We did it like a live Broken Lizard tour yeah. a couple of years ago and we did an America American Idol or America's Got Talent whatever show whatever. she was on yeah. and uh, and we said okay Miss Susan Boyle and she comes out he comes out in a wig and a dress and it's just that she's got a filthy mouth yeah that's perfect I, I feel like know. she probably does she probably does she probably does well, yeah. what, 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 what do we say yeah. well the great thing was it was like that was a sketch with like we're talking about like Bukaki and like yeah, Donkey yeah. Punch <laughs> and all that stuff and we did a show in Alaska where yeah. they had uh, sign language interpreters Oh, right. And do they, they had, have sign for those have, things? Yeah, Bukaki was like, was literally like this. That's uh, the best boy. thing I've ever seen. I know, yeah, gross. it was great. I can do that now, and no one will know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, exactly. that's power. But, the, <laughs> but somebody who's deaf will be like, oh yeah, like now they know. Why is she doing? That? Yeah. <laughs> now we, they'll have Beatlemania. God. But you were the you were the Susan Waldman of the Nets for a little while. Like, oh, you were the locker room reporter, right? Yeah, I just was, but I was. I mean, I don't know. I've never How really taken any it? job so seriously. I did it for like. 
two years, three years. For the years? Yes Network. Yeah, like during really bad years. Yeah, what like, year, who got what, like a Jason Kidd year? We had the Kidd it? years, but okay. we had the Kidd migraine slash wannabe trade years. <laughs> like, that was it. Okay. So there was drama between him, Richard Jefferson, Vince Carter, yeah. um, coaching stuff. It was just, I really, I liked all of them. Like, I yeah. liked that whole group. Yeah. And it's, you learn a lot when, a, when you cover a team for an entire season and they're horrible. You sort yeah. of have to find ways to entertain yourselves. And, you know, we had Ian Eagle, who, to me, forever is the most underrated yeah. play-by-play dude in any to, uh, sport. I used to listen to him on the I fan. Love him. I love him the so fan, much. The fan, yeah. I love it because he's doing a lot of uh, of the tournament. But yeah, yeah. He, he, we just we would do these idiot segments where I'd go out in the snow and like we had one game that almost got snowed out, and I'm just out there shoveling <laughs> snow. Like, all right, guys, this is what we're because. The game, you know, they weren't great. Sure. And but did you still have to go into the locker room? Yeah, I'd still do the, the serious, uh, like, yeah. you know, ask okay. questions and all that and do the stuff before with the coach. But it was... Is it still weird for, like, like you know, people talk about this all the time, about women in the, the locker, locker room. room. Is it so weird to go in? Or is it, has it changed? It. No, I mean, I, I truly believe everyone's a little uncomfortable. It's sure. such a stupid thing that we have done. I don't know why we haven't just... Look, there is a press conference room that yeah. the coach comes to after every single and game. And they seem to be moving a little more to that direction. It feels like it. putting the microphone in the guy's face yeah. with his locker, getting because in the shower. Because he might be dressed, but yeah. the dude next to him isn't. And right. so it's just this awkward, sweaty, especially when you're on the road and the, the opposing locker rooms are tiny. Um, I always used to walk in with my <laughs> head down and my hand on my camera guy's back and be like, all right, let me know when. And then I could look up because okay. what Because why? For people to put their tr- clothes I on? Just, I don't really want to see all that. I know yeah. that. I mean, that's the I weird thing see, like, about it. Junk and then be like, oh, see him again the next day. Hello. Right. Sure. How did you have those weird moments? There were, did you have weird moments? Like I, have that? I seen wieners? Well, no, I'm not, not that. <laughs> but I'm saying, like, um, <laughs> she eats shit. For breakfast. I know it. <laughs> no, I mean, were there weird, uncomfortable things in locker rooms where people got angry that you were there? No, I've never, kind of stuff, I've or? never had that. If anything, yeah. I think when there are women in the locker room, they sort of, you know, it's a lot of checking out who the new chick is and yeah. all that kind of stuff. It's just a. It's an awkward situation, I think, for anyone. I mean, the writers are just, you know, writers are writers. They yeah, just want to yeah. get their story done. Um, and they don't seem to really care. And then there's always sort of a battle between writing and TV. Although that those two worlds are now meshing. Yeah. You're noticing yeah. a lot of writers are now TV people. Yeah. So it's it's just a, it's you're cramming a lot of stuff into a tiny little space. Yeah. While, while these guys are trying to shower, get dressed, either catch the plane or go on to wherever they're going to go. Were there right. guys who would try to let you see their junk? I don't, I, I mean, I'm trying to remember if I like, Besides I don't feel I like it. Yeah. I know. I mean, I and wouldn't stop. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't remember a specific case. Like, you know, you have a lot of just wearing a towel around, which that could go wrong at any given second. But Uh I don't remember anyone... you know, purposely doing it. Yeah, I'm also kind of stupid sometimes. But do you th- play uh, dumb, it makes it easier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you think it's changed? Like the the it's changed. Say over the last ten years, or the access of the women or the or the reactions or the acceptance of um, women in the locker room, or even as as a as female reporters. Or it's you know? a weird. I, I mean, I do. I think we're definitely farther ahead. I I I also want to continue to see us getting way different jobs than just being sideline reporters because right like in the booth and, yeah, yeah like you know yeah. i think sideline reporting is great especially when you're young and you're trying to get your foot in the door yeah, yeah. but there's so there's a lot more that we can be doing we, we we have opinions and we can host and we can do all this other stuff yeah and i think there's some good like ali laforce is doing stuff and i think i you can tell like people really respect her she's doing a great job um she sounds like she knows what she's talking about rather than right. just like the dumb same formula questions that we sure. hear all the time. So I, I do. I mean, it's it's interesting. It, it's also the first insult when you may say something that someone doesn't agree with. Like, because right. we're women, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. all the same junk. Yeah. It's, not, it's not what they tell men. Like, they don't tell men you're fat and ugly yeah, and you right. slept your way and all that. It's, it's right. just a That's different, why you don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like, that's why you don't know anything. Yeah, yeah. But I think, I mean, I definitely think that. I mean, when I started doing Sports Nation the first time, there weren't a lot of people who were allowed to just have opinions. Yeah. Like, that was not, we were either sideline reporters or reporters and... That was kind of it, or hosting, and that was it. Yeah. So it was kind of nice. Like we we have a lot. There are is a lot there of like us. a bonding thing between the women in the business, or is I that think not, for the most or part, is it more of a caddy thing. No, I, I know we have a bad rep. There are a couple yeah. outliers that are not girls, girls, and yeah. that's fine. They're, that's in every business for every gender, but every gender, everyone, every, every single, single one of them, out there. <laughs> <laughs> all of them. Um, but I think for the most part, I I love the women that are doing this because yeah. we're all sort of dealing with the same junk and in this day of social media um it's almost become funny like hey yeah. look at this cool thing someone sent me today uh and you know and, and that's good because i want those people to support each other and the young ones you know if they ask to shadow you i think it's really important that you do that yeah and yeah. let the other ones sort of burn out and hopefully that will happen because well, I, I also feel like there was a point in time where there was a criticism where the women didn't necessarily know the sport or whatever right. it was i don't I, I don't see that anymore in the no. sense that like it seems like you can't hide that. 
No. Like if you're a woman and you're doing well, that job and you can feel that they do know what they're talking about. You can hide it. I mean, you can hide it if you're a sideline reporter. You think? It, oh, because, you know, hey, coach, you're down by four going in the half. What adjustments? You're gonna, right, you right, You can right, ask that at right. any game at any time for anyone. But when you when they have to interview that person right. after the game or whatever, it then feels it's like different. it's hard to hide that these days because there's so much attention. You right. Know, right, and you, you notice it. I think whether male or female, we notice the ones that are like, oh, that person has a real grasp on the interview. They're actually listening to the answer right. versus someone who may be just either being fed something or... Same old, same old. Right. Same so you can see, you can kind of see I that feel in your like mind. It. You I, think so? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel yeah. like we can tell who kind of knows what they're doing. Yeah, I feel like I can tell that with the guys too. I agree. Sure, sure. That's yeah. But like, so, so Kevin had uh, a, a rivalry with Jim Gaffigan. Oh. Who we put we put him, we put him in Super Troopers and Kevin didn't want him to be in the movie because Jim Gaffigan always beat him out for uh, sure on commercial auditions, including sure. ESPN. ESPN sure. had to beat him. That's there, right. Huh? That's right. Wait, which yeah. one was he in? It was it was early. It was probably like. Mid nineties, yeah, and uh, he had a campaign for a while, but he had like three different campaigns at that time: Rolling Rock, Rolling Rock, Saturn, and ESPN. Yeah, wow. he was a spokesman for all those. Oh, and uh, yeah, I lost out to all of them. Down. Yeah, and so he, of he tried to veto him. We put him in the movie anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, oh no, we're allowed one veto. That's good. And by the way, I would put him in purposely every time. Yeah, just no, sure. knowing that you have. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, exactly. That's that's what we're dealing with. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any? Who's your Jim Gaffigan? Do you have any rivals? No, I think there are people that people want to make it look like I fight with. Um, the internet's a wonderful place. You can say whatever you want, and it becomes true over years. I, I don't know. know how that happens. Yeah, but, no. but not really. I mean, I think you know, for the women that I look at as my peers and stuff, I don't, I don't really have one that stands out. I mean, there's, you know. Some I like, some I don't, but there's men, too. Yeah, of yeah. course. I don't like Lenny. Uh-huh. He doesn't. He hates me. No, you guys love each other. Yeah, we do. Delta we when do. I walked in here. I know we do. Did you? <laughs> did you? <laughs> did you have to live in Bristol, Connecticut? I did. Well, I did. I lived in uh, Farmington, which okay. is a 15-minute drive I'm from Bristol. Connecticut. That's why I said Where are you from? I'm from West Haven, Connecticut. Oh, sure. Which is down next to New Haven. Yep. But we used to go up to that... Um, uh, that uh, that park, that Lake Compounds. Oh which is yes, right, across the, right across the street. From we used to go there all the time. I was there almost a year before I realized there was an amusement park yeah, across the street. Yeah. I had no. You have no idea. <laughs> it's know. hidden in the trees. I mean, is is a roller coaster boring being in Bristol? Or yeah, uh, it's so you lived in Bristol. I lived. Yeah, I mean, yeah. farming. Yeah, I lived. Yeah, okay. I was there for three years. It's. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it was for me. But yeah. I, you know, I was a single person. I had my dog. It winters. It's dark at three o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. It's like, okay, I'm going to bed. It's 5.30. Um, it's just a weird place to is. have that, that mega business Isn't that being crazy? centered yeah, to me. It, because the thing about it was, I think a lot of people have these romantic notions that, oh, well, I'll live in the city and I'll commute. Yeah. Well, for me, from my place in New York, it was an hour and yeah, 40 an hour, minutes yeah, door yeah. to door. Yeah, and sure. there was no, you know, there's, a tree, there's no train that drops you off in Bristol. If there yeah. was, I think it would have probably changed the yeah. game, but there's not. There's nothing in Bristol. There's the ESPN. There's like, you just drive up on ESPN. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen it. It's just like. You know, a hundred gigantic satellite dishes. It's crazy. It's building, like a weird planet. It. Yeah, there was a yeah. sports bar where Aaron Hernandez used to hang out. So like, we have that claim to fame now. He, <laughs> we got he, that going for he us. He grew up on the rough and tumble streets of Bristol. So <laughs> now we know. Now we know. Did he really? I barely. Yeah. yeah I barely there. escaped. Yeah, he was from there. Good for you for getting out. <laughs> I got out. But the that's the funny thing is, like, uh, uh, you drive around Bristol and you're like. This is where is Aaron Hennings was in the gangs that yeah. you're talking about. But apparently, I guess it happens. I don't know. It's, it's crazy. Well, I yeah. found out when I was there that New Haven is a scary crime. New Haven place. is a, is a no very scary idea. crime. New Haven and Bridgeport are. are yeah. uh, oh, Bridgeport. Yeah. Yeah. Are a little tough. New Haven is like a notorious one, though. Isn't that yeah. crazy, though? But Yale's there. It's Yale. Yeah. 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 Yale's the, the only thing, thing there that's. Uh, oh, I shouldn't say that kind of stuff. But yeah, it's the only thing there that's. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so where you lived there in target. Bristol for three years. For three years, okay. I did it. And then you got the hell out of there. You came, you came here, or you came no? To New- I went to uh, New York. This other place for two years. What? You're not allowed uh, to say it. No, it's NBC. I just, oh, okay, I okay. hated it, so I just. But tried. you did like so much shit. Like you like covered the Olympics. I did, you... but it wasn't. Right? I'm glad I did it. It yeah. feels like a bucket list. Like boom, done. But yeah. it wasn't. Um, it's not. Every- it just didn't do it for me. No? It wasn't exciting like I thought it was. It was cool to be like, oh, I'm going to London for a month to hang out and do the Olympics. Right. But at the end of the day, it was, you know, I sat at a desk for four hours and I threw to, you know, curling or whatever the heck it was. Right. Yeah. Right. Something. And I just, that was it. The best part of those days was I had a 45 second switch to Willie Geist who did the shift after me. Okay. Then he took off and I just <laughs> stayed the same. And I was like working with him for 45 seconds was like, all right, this this guy's awesome. I want to do more stuff. Right. And then, yeah, it was good. And did you access didn't go Hollywood. Uh, boozing it up with the Bob Costas and that kind of stuff? Stuff in no. London or no? I mean, I should have, right? <laughs> right? No, because the days were long, right? Which was the crazy part. And then by the time you would be finished and get home, you're like, all right, yeah, just go grab some food at the little bar downstairs and go to bed, right? So it wasn't, it wasn't it's the romantic and, right. uh, thing that it was, yeah. In theory, be. I think it's way sexier. I think I went out one night with some friends, really, yeah. 
That was it. Because you're too damn busy. Yeah, well, and then I Irish goodbye in the middle of it all. Yeah, like, yeah, all right, yeah, exactly. See you tomorrow. That's the Irish so, yeah. goodbye. Well, I call that the French exit. But I guess. Right. Yeah, I yeah like why do we goodbye. call it that? Why is it that? I don't know. It's whoever, whoever you whoever you think of as being a person who leaves. Yeah, goodbye. but I guess the Irish one actually makes a lot of sense to me because it's why? like, well, I what I think is because the Irish would will always try to convince you to stay at the bar, oh. and so the Irish exit is knowing that knowing that the, like the only way I can ever leave a bar with my college friends. Is to make an Irish right. Exit. You can't right. say goodbye. Otherwise, you say, you're going to the bathroom me. and right. you never come back. Yeah, that kind of thing. You just sort of duck out. Right. Yeah. I love doing the Irish. I exit. love it yeah. so much. The older I get, the more I like it. Because you, goodbyes it's nece- are yeah. necessary. Yeah. You can't say goodbye. No. Yeah. But because it also takes a lot of strength to do an Irish uh, goodbye. <laughs> I always text you on the way out. Oh, sorry, I missed you. I couldn't find you. Anyways, I'll see you next time. <laughs> see you tomorrow. <laughs> but it's so freeing when you, you're like, oh my god, I made it out of there. Yeah. Uh, like now I'm gonna go binge eat pizza by myself <laughs> in yeah. the dark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And watch TV. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. All right. So when you went to um, NBC, you also did Access Hollywood. Then. Yes. Okay. And you covered like all like the big events. All I liked, on the red carpet. That kind of I stuff. I didn't like that. You I didn't like, like red that. carpets. Why? Because people were assholes. No, actually, they were fine. I just don't see the point of it all i mean yeah. it'd be, I, I would like it more i think if fun questions were asked and we sort of had more fun but and it seems to be like the women of hollywood seem to be doing this uh ask me something else or ask me another question or whatever that, that as opposed is. to like what i'm wearing right like you know it, it, i just i don't care yeah and so yeah. i'm not great at pretending i care so yeah. it, was, it was a weird fit for me but i love doing the interviews yeah like, i love doing the interviews sitting yeah. down and having a conversation was my favorite part of all of it yeah but i will never say nice things about the kardashians or any of that kind of stuff <laughs> and so it's always sort of like uh sure billy yeah, and I'm not saying anything. I'm right. just gonna sit here and right. smile. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Nothing snarky. No yeah. anything snarky. No, I know. Yeah, and that's interesting because you know, uh, following you on Twitter, like I said, it was like a, it was a tweet of some kind. I think yeah. it was like I know it's, this is is crazy, but it was just some like s- snarky tweet about like somebody's food choice on an airplane, like how it smelled or something like oh, that. Oh God! And I was like, I like that. That's a nice <laughs> sarcastic tweet right there. I imagine that the. The personality attached to something like that has a lot of funny stuff to say about mm. the red carpet that, that you can't possibly like that you can't. in the moment. Yeah. You can't I wish there was a show doing because be there is obviously an appetite for yeah. that 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 coverage, that celebrity stuff and yep. red carpets obviously. Um but I feel like all those shows are sort of blended together as the same thing. And I really wish someone would sort of take one of those shows or a format and rip it up and just do something yeah. fresh. Because it's very controlled, too. Very. Like your PR pr- people are all standing Absolutely. there like an army. And, you know, it's like. Yeah. It's and, just a formula now. It's a formula. Yeah. And there is pushing and shoving on the red carpet. Oh, my gosh. We've it's been pushed awkward. out of the way many we times. Have, I've never, have you really? Oh, yeah. Nobody's, for what? nobody's ever pushed anybody out of the way for me. It's always <laughs> people pushed us out of the way. Oh, like we got pushed out of the way for Shaquille O'Neal. Shut up! And no. then I remember we went to we went to one. Oh, it was Sandler. It was a Sandler movie. It was like Click or one of those movies. Remember mm. that? Yeah. And we got out of the car and we were going to be taken down the thing. Right. That you, yes. you start at the top and then yeah. you go in. And so we started to go and they're like. Get out of the way! Oh no! Get out of the way! And then we turned around and it was like Christopher Walken. Like, it's Christopher Walken. And they put, they shoved us aside. And Christopher Walken went through. Okay, we got back up to the end. <laughs> and then we started going down. It's like get out of the way! Oh get out of the way! You know. And then it was uh, 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 Mary Steenburgen. Oh come right? on! So they pushed us out of the way, and she goes through. Yeah. And then eventually we went down, and then it was like you know. I'd be like, screw you guys. The you don't photographers get this like, get out of the way. Get out of the way. Who's this guy? You know. They That's went, the. Ah, it's you know, the wor- it's I don't know how people get used to it's that. It's rough. I hate. I hate the red carpet. I, yeah, it it, sucks. that that little chunk where you're supposed to stand there and take a picture is. I try never to do it. Like yeah. every once in a while at ESPN, they're like, oh, we please you. I d- there's nothing to do. I don't know how to stand. Yeah. I, I sort of end up making a stupid joke and putting my hands out, and then the pictures are like so right. bad. That's what I do. I like, hate if, it. If you see any of mine on the internet, it's always like <laughs> double thumbs up. Oh, thumbs you know? up is for <laughs> sure. I for sure do yeah. a thumbs up. Yeah. It's something fucking stupid. <laughs> it's, it's true because uh, like I'll see – I remember watching Rob Lowe do it one time. And oh. He was just like squinting at the so camera and like good. glaring, and I was like <laughs> – I should do that. <laughs> yeah. But then when I would do that, I look like such a moron. I'm like, you know, trying to clench my jaw. You have to. I If you ever watch, like, they'll take the footage of just someone standing there for 20 or 30 seconds and they're just doing right. That. I have to give it to them. There, I, there is, there's some sort of mechanism in me that will not ever allow me to do that. To yeah. stand there and make these like weird cozy faces <laughs> for 30 seconds. Yeah. And I'm just like, I, yeah. I give you props. Like yeah. that took some sort of self awareness that. And it's crazy. And not just uh, a quiet 30 seconds. People are screaming, screaming, Rob, Rob, (laughs) 
<laughs> Rob, over here. That was like I went to the Eyes Wide oh. Shut premiere. Oh right. God! And yeah. this is like one of my first big Hollywood big experiences. Yeah, hello, hello. I hate to say you and Cruz, that is a list. You and Cruz, <laughs> yeah. But I was there with uh, with Clooney's assistant, okay, who okay. was producing Super Troopers. Oh, okay. she became a producer of Super Troopers. That's okay, so awesome. And so, like, we. Basically, we were at the same table with Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman. Wow. And it was like, wow. but it was like. Who was taller? People. Good question. Who was taller? Good question. You or Cruise? By a hair. <laughs> nice. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> so good. Taller and, than Cruise? And believe me, I, I measured. We, that's Hell a game yeah. we, always, we always play, yeah. the, the measure my height versus. Yeah. Who's Lemmy? Uh, yeah. Hollywood's a bizarrely small place. They are. That's why we put Lemmy up against them all yeah. the time. <laughs> See, all the, the time. Gauge. My, look, I don't know if you're taller than Beetle. I think Beetle might be taller Listen, than Listen, I'm just going to say this. Uh. My track record is pretty good. I've, I've taken down some of the shortest. You have. Some of the shortest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, crushed. Kevin Hart, you must crush. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, He's Kevin tiny. Easy. Emilio Estevez. Emilio Estevez is a great one. How tall is he? Short. He's real. Sure. That was a funny one because we were at Sundance for the first time yep. with our first movie, Puddle Cruiser. Yep. And we saw him in a bar and it was like, oh, no. this is the first time we played the game. Yeah. It was like, they dared me. They were like, go, go. And they, <laughs> there were like 20 of us there uh, supporting the film and I, was, I didn't want to do it. I was like, I'm going to lose this Do you thing. just, do you say anything or you just walk by? You just walk by. Okay. Put Fair. your head, you know, back, back against back. <laughs> but it was like, I was really nervous to do it and everybody's it's a flyby. Like, it's a flyby. Yeah. This is going to be close. And I was like, okay. I, as I was walking closer oh to him. I the the relief started to wash over me because I was like, I am gonna crush <laughs> this little easy? dude, and I just went by and like looked back at the fellas like, look at this, <laughs> look at this, yeah, here look it at is. this. I got him by like four is. inches. Here it is, yeah. Gordon Bombay. Um, Beetle and I have a few things in common. Uh oh, you're both beautiful. Mm. Right, nice. So well you done. went well to UT. Done. You went to UT. Yeah. Right in Austin. Yeah. And then the other one, San Antonio as well. Oh, okay. Wait, spent a little time. Wait, you yeah. didn't go to UT. I know. I know, like, that's a, okay. Political science major. Oh, yep. Started out. Wait, hold on a second. Like both of us. Let's just back up. What is the UT in common? It's not. I'm just saying that's where she went to college. Yeah. Oh, I thought you said you had a lot in common. We do. <laughs> Here's what I'm saying. And then you said we went to UT. Now I'm getting to it. Now I'm getting to it. We okay. read books. Political <laughs> science majors, <laughs> both of us. Speak English. <laughs> uh, Beatles pre-law. Oh, yeah. Were you pre-law? Uh, I went to law school. He's, can I say something about Wait. Kevin? That I always say in every podcast. Yeah. <laughs> He's a lawyer He's in two lawyer. states. In, in two, two states. states. Yeah. Past Is this bar. one of them? No. Damn it. Uh, New York and Connecticut. Oh. Bristol. That's actually, those are two good states to be a lawyer Good states, in, right? Right. Yeah. But I'm not, I, I don't do it. I don't, Why not? I don't practice it. Wait, so you spent all that money and time? Yeah. Wow. His father's a judge. Yeah. Did you have to do it? Uh, I didn't have to do it. I, I wanted to. I enjoyed it. Yeah. I enjoyed it. And but but when I was going to law school, we were also doing live comedy shows in New York City. So I mean, that's insane. Like a you know, it was fun. What but, kind of law? I never specialized in okay. anything. I just got through law school, took the bar, and then that was it. But if we, I wanted to sue someone, could I hire you? You couldn't, no, because I and can't. I'm not a... <laughs> you shouldn't. It's certainly not covered. Yeah, yeah. We Believe me, Kevin, and I, as I repeat on every podcast, <laughs> Kevin is not... Like, we've had, we've had legal issues, and, and uh, sometimes <laughs> there's like... A major loophole, like one time somebody uh, didn't pay us two hundred thousand dollars. Not my job. Not my job. That's a lot. And they're like, "It's right here. It's right here. The it's loophole is job. right here." We're right. like, "What? Not my job. The fuck? That's why you pay, I'm paying a lawyer for that." I know. I'm just saying. I know, but you, you could save a lot of money. He's our last. You were going to go to law school. Yeah, Did, I wanted to be. I just wanted to save the world. I wanted to yeah. go to politics. Yeah. I, I can't I campaigned for Clinton. Did you? I was like, in yeah. Texas? Worked at the Capitol in Texas. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I did I did all that. And then one day I remember sitting in a room, you know that they have those pre law fraternities. Yeah. That, that's you know, it's really nerdy and awesome. And I remember sitting around <laughs> looking at the room and everyone at the time was just super just a kind of sure. money Hardcore. driven. Yeah. And I I just I remember it. I was like, I don't want to do this. Yeah. And that was it. I just stopped. I stopped going to class. I stopped everything. Were yeah. your parents and like, then I just left. Michelle? Yeah, pretty much. Because I was or an overachiever. Michelle, yeah. yeah, I know. Like, what are you doing? I was like, I don't know, but I can't do this. I'm killing my GPA because I don't care about it. Yeah. And I just left for like three years and... Left was, school altogether? Yeah, I left school altogether. That's yeah. why I, my degree is actually from UT San Antonio because after three years, I went home. Got it. Got the internship with the Spurs and then was like, well, I should probably finish college. I only had right. like a semester or two left. Did you make the Spurs pay for it? No, no. I mean, <laughs> David imagine. Robinson. Yeah. I begged for that too. That internship. I was like, did I, just, you? I need to do something, and I have no idea what. And you to do loved in my the life. Spurs. And you thought I that did. Was a great thing. I was like, I'll just do whatever you guys need. What was the internship? Care. What did you? Was it just? Like I worked in, in production. Office? Like okay. a, yeah, and so we were. You know, we were the ones who made the little promos to put them together. Oh, that's we would cool. do like skits with those guys for. And local. was that the first time you'd done anything like? Uh, I, when I say creative, I don't mean yeah. like a well, sport. No, career. no. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, in Austin, I I wrote a hockey column. 
for yeah. the paper. Are you a hockey fan or no? Nah. I mean, we had a minor league hockey team, which I also interned for for a minute, yeah. and um, and it was fun. So I was like, yeah. all right, I'll do this. And at that time, I was like, well, I, I kind of, you know, I like sports. Maybe I can do something with that. Yeah. So is that why you were choosing sports teams? Because you thought it would just be a fun I thought it'd be work. fun, yeah. yeah. And my my best friend at the time was like, "This is what I'm going to do." I was like, "All right, well, I'll go with you." And it turned out to be really fun. I was like, "This is great." Now, I still at that point had no idea about TV or anything like that. That was all sort of a fluke. But okay, so you didn't go into like like telejournalism, no. or take any classes like that. No, I asked one day if I could do a segment for this kid show that the Spurs had, and they're like, "Sure, why not?" I mean, it was it, literally it's like a, the Coyote was the star of the show. Right, that sure. says anything, still which is, is awesome. <laughs> I know he really is. Some days, um, and I did a segment on. How to care for your pet, and so I went to a <laughs> local pet store and was like, "This is how," you... and it was so bad. And did they have a player with you, or the coyote was? No, with you? it was just me, just you. Okay. And this thing was okay. geared towards like seven year olds. Like, this right. is how you wash a dog for the sports team for this for this little right. kid Saturday morning program right. the for kids the kids on deck. Same yeah, thing. yeah. It's exactly right, like right, that. Right, it was right. Coyote Clubhouse, right? <laughs> <laughs> Emmy Award winning, and uh, and uh, I based on that, I probably should have never pursued TV. But I I had one camera guy that was like, "You need to just be the way you are with us and just do it on." camera but don't and, and ignore the camera and yeah. i was like so is that was happening when you first started out totally natural you were just feeling a little stiff i oh totally i mean yeah. i i looked terrified and like <laughs> i wasn't sure that my name was my name like i just it was i mean i've never been one that like taking pictures like none of this was anything that i would like i went to my high school reunion and they were sort of going we would have never thought you'd be doing this right like, yeah me neither right it's weird right. it's weird were, how it worked were out you like the, the boom goes the dynamite guy <laughs> 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 I wish that poor fella. Like I killed it. Whatever. That's one of the greatest pieces of video. Yeah. Of all time. Boom. <laughs> Where is that guy? I don't know. I feel Where like he did he a now? Tosh .0 oh or something not that Maybe, long ago, yeah. like a redemption or something. Really? <laughs> yeah. It's it's funny because I've, I've like Boom Goes the Dynamite has made it into the lexicon. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's great. Absolutely. That guy did that. He did that. I may die him. and never have done anything like nah, that. No, there's still time. I know. There's still I, time. Boom goes the dynamite. That was on his first try. <laughs> I it's true. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe it wasn't. Well, it the first one we like got to see. might have had some bad ones too. Like, yeah. Kapow. Kapow. Or, 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 Kapow. Or it up I like cake. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah boom. Yeah. 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 Whoosh goes the whistle. Oh, oh. that didn't work. That whoosh, didn't work. Whoosh goes the whistle. When, when did the the sense. rodeo? When did that the uh, professional uh, was it professional rodeo? Was yeah, it, it was it. It was PBR professional P bull riding. Professional bull riding. Yeah, okay. that's the cert. That's the league, right? That's, that's the that's, league uh -huh. It's like basically rodeo. They realized like the bull riding was the biggest event of the rodeo. So yeah. these guys brand like basically branched off and started their own company specializing in bull up. riding yeah okay. just bull riding and they put on a great show um when did that happen and they broadcast and they had a thing it was all yeah we, they were we, on... we're northeasterners we don't know this shit we well, don't know no. about well no you'd be shocked though yeah. I, so the, it used to air on i think what is now versus or what oh, is versus. It still versus well versus yeah. turned into something else right right I Ver OLN, or OLN. Or OLN. i thought versus was bought by nbc no I have no I maybe know. OLN definitely bought Versus right okay, okay. so nice. I think at the time it was OLN by the way maybe. when I say definitely now what I would do is <laughs> maybe it's definitely. the other way around it's actually probably Versus that bought OLN <laughs> that probably sounds right I'm usually completely wrong like OLN disappeared and became Versus I think Could I have okay. no idea but that's what it that's aired what on that's what it was on okay. yeah and I, I they had hired um, at the time and I have no idea what her name was but it was like Miss America or something yeah. um, that wanted to be a TV chick and they hired her and she had to go back for two weekends to give her crown back and be part of all that stuff okay. so I was filling in okay. and then I did it and did you like, know anything about bull riding zero anything? Okay. zero I went the event is like on Saturday night, the televised event. So there's yeah. an event Friday night too. So I went Friday night in like sweats and jeans and I just remember standing there like, okay, I got to learn a lot of words and lingo and rules. And I'm just like, okay. And I'll never forget Jewel, who was married to Ty Murray at okay. the time. Oh, yeah. I, I feel like this tap on my back and I turn around. She's like, hi, my name's Jewel. And, I and is she Jewel at this point? Is she oh, yeah. oh God, yeah. Okay, she's got it. Okay. the most famous person in any building okay. we went to. Okay. And, uh, and she's like, I just want to welcome you to the family. I'm like, what? where am I? <laughs> what is happening here? <laughs> <laughs> like okay, I didn't own you know I didn't own cowboy boots or right. I, I think at the time I had like lucky brand jeans. So I was like, okay. that's not what you're supposed to wear. Do you own riding. cowboy boots now? I do. Um, okay. I, yeah, okay. actually, okay. I have a pair of like uh, custom made Spurs cowboy boots. Oh, oh yeah, okay. they're okay. awesome. That's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and so I learned. I had to learn a lot, but I also think part of that whole world is not you don't don't pretend like you know yeah. if you don't know just okay. be naturally you know ask questions and that would be you fine like too did you throw yourself into it and try to learn about it I tried or? to learn as much as I could Do but I also you feel like you learned the nuances of things of it or um to a point I mean I definitely can watch a ride now and and kind of tell what's going on and if it's good or if it's bad yeah. um you know but I also think a lot of that is to just get a feed on those guys like yeah. people love those guys but that's like you know that's the kind of thing that you do. Like, it's great, obviously, to have that philosophy behind yourself saying, like, you know what, just go be yourself. Yeah. But that is the kind of thing that you do that 
opens you up to criticism because then you have For the sure. people who are like, they don't know what they're fucking talking about. Oh, yeah, about yeah, yeah. And, you know. Yeah, I, I learned that at horse racing last year or whatever at NBC. They're, that horse racing community is crazy. Yeah. yeah. They are, I mean, look, I, that's the thing. I, have no, I think it's much easier to say, hey, I'm just here to have fun and ask questions like anybody else would. Sure. I'm not here to pretend like I know everything. Like I'm an expert. Yeah. Um, and I never did. God knows I never did with horse racing. I just had a million questions. And I remember like there was this one woman, who, I mean, her avatar was her just uncomfortably caressing a horse's head. <laughs> and she, every day she was just like, what is this lady? And I'm like, you know, I invited her. I was like, why don't you come to the Kentucky Derby and let's just, let's just see if we can work this out. Yeah. Like you are just very mean. Yeah. <laughs> so I, th- I find crazy. that too. Like I, I moved out to a, a horse area, Uh-oh. a horse country, the horse world, the horse world. And <laughs> I feel like there's a weird, it's a weird personality. It's weird. It's like, uh, like they don't like outsiders. Which is a bummer because you know? there are a lot of really great people and those people realize that, hey, we want this sport to grow. We yeah. want more people to watch it other than just one Sunday or one Saturday in a year. Yeah. Like we want people to talk about sure. it. Sure. Um, and those are the ones obviously that you should listen to. But you know how human nature is. I hear the one negative thing. I'm like, wait, why, why are you so mean to me? Right. Well, let's talk about this. Yeah. Did they embrace you ultimately though? That the, the, this person? The, no, the, the, the PBR <laughs> uh, world. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They were like, they were pretty good. Yeah. I never felt too too much on that one i think they they thought like oh you know she's she's there and she's learning and that's fine was it a surprising thing like i i, I say this <laughs> ignorant eastern in northeasterners but it was a surprising thing that you go around and people recognize you from it and it was always a, uh was it surprising i, mean, I don't even know, know if they big the did audience that much was? yeah i mean i was surprised by the event like yeah. I, we went to you know philadelphia okay. and the event was where the sixers play and it was like it was they packed. filled that building yeah that was what scared me. I was like, we were okay. on the East Coast and they're filling buildings. This right. is awesome. Yeah. I went right. to one at Madison Square Garden. Yes. And it's I, fun, right? It's like there's sand in the garden. Yeah. <laughs> that's so makes good. No sense to oh, me. you should see when they load the bulls. They have to come up that ramp in the garden and it's just a trail of bulls going up that ramp. That's awesome. It's such a visual. Yeah. And it smells awesome. <laughs> it smells good. So good. I do like that smell. <laughs> have, you, have, you, have you been to the Calgary Stampede? Yes, once. Is it amazing? It's pretty cool. I, I feel like it's a cool event to go to if you can, just to take it all in. Now, okay, so then also it seems like one of your uh, TV uh, segments might be getting on a bull and ride. Did you ever get on a bull? I got on a bull while it was in the shoot. Um, I put never on like the out, Never out in the pen. Or no, and I'll be honest with you, it, it was scary just sitting there. It was bodacious, I think, which was a famous bull at that time. I think he's dead now. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was he filled that thing. Like yeah. both sides are touching, and you can feel him lean. So your legs sort of like crushing up against oh, the shoe. And I'm just thinking like, I would never. you know, and I'm I was bigger than a lot of those bull riders. Yeah. And so it was just like I don't know how these dudes do this because at yeah. any given moment this thing could freak out and buck, and Crushing. I'm sitting here like an idiot with a mic on, and right. that's it. Holy shit. Yeah, I don't know how they do it. I got yeah. on a baby one once and it hurt so bad because it was all bony. It's like, this is dumb. What am right, I doing? Right, right, right. <laughs> we'll get a, off now. I don't like adventure. <laughs> we, we went uh, like to bullfighting, uh, like a little tourist bullfighting ring in Mexico. Yeah, we did. What? Yeah. With, With no rules. No rule. It was like. It was in Mexico. Oh, I bet I would hate that. Yeah. It was. Yeah, I mean, they weren't like hurting them or anything. Okay. Like that, but it was like, uh, you know, we're like a. It was for a wedding. Oh. And they took uh, the groom and all of his, uh, the, the, the boys to this. Out, wow. in the middle, fighting out in the session. middle of nowhere. There were no like spears or session. swords or anything. Yeah, no, or that's rules. What it, was. it was out in the middle of nowhere. We thought they were taking us to kill us somewhere. <laughs> yeah. And they dropped us off this pen, and there's like three or four bulls in there, and then and then bottles of tequila and beer. What? And then it was just that's like, get in the ring. Oh. Come on. Yeah. And then what? Just run? Yeah. We got, people run got in the ring. One at a time, you'd go, or like two at a time, you'd go and you'd hold a cape. Oh, no. And these bulls would come at you, and we were dealing with like baby bulls. But uh, still, one of our buddies got gored. He did. One guy got flipped up, flipped up in the air and down yeah. the ground. And then afterwards, they were like, "Maybe you had not tell the wedding planner <laughs> about this, okay?" It's the kind of thing if you did in the states, you have to sign like all kinds of waivers. One hundred percent. You know what I mean? This is in Mexico. They didn't care. Yeah, they, they gave you tequila tell. and said, "Go run around with the bulls." Like, I okay. hope there was video of that because if I got flipped in the air, I'd want video of that. Yeah, yeah. there were definitely pictures. I, I got oh, some pictures okay. of it, but the dude got hurt. Because well, he did get hurt. I know, but yeah. it's a story to tell. He got oh, fired yeah. and carried out of it's there. It's a story to tell. Ooh, no, not doing it. But that was probably like a paying your dues kind of thing for you or no? Yeah, no, I I mean, I I didn't know any better. Like I genuinely had zero plans and zero goals. I was just like, all right, I'm going to work in television and see what happens. And so I just, I I really had some lucky, I got a lucky break. That was the first job. What's your big break? I mean, that was technically like, that was a national job and it was my first real job. Yeah. And I was like, oh. 
So, you know, it's it's a horribly spoiled moment because you realize like, oh man, I, if I had done the normal route, which is you go, but that, that's only if you really know what you want to do. You know, you go to local television in a small market and you just work your way up. That's a long time. Yeah, sure. So I really, I'm fortunate that that kind of worked out that way. And then also I didn't have requirements to jobs. I sort of was just like, well, I'm going to do everything for a while until I figure out what I'm doing. Yeah. And I took basically every job. And you did. I did. I took every single job that was yeah. offered that no, was not Animal gross. Planet, <laughs> Travel Channel, Discovery Channel. Yeah. I mean, there's all kinds of things. Like my, to... just randomly doing How things. did you get Sports Nation? Did you... I that... auditioned. Oh, really? I was like one of the last people to audition. And by then, uh, I, you know... You just you've heard no so many sure. times. You guys Were you like in a room worse. with all the other people auditioning? No, or you kind of. I went to Bristol. Um, yeah, they people? had already auditioned a bunch of people. How many people go in for an audition like that? Um, they said they had seen like I don't know, I think maybe fifteen or twenty, okay. something okay. like that. I think they had, and yeah, I would think it was like the last one. And uh, I went in, and really the audition, you know, there was none of this technology. It was all still ideas. Like they had a. a a mark erase board, whatever that thing is called. Yeah, yeah. And that was sort of the idea of what we were going to do. And the audition was really to see if you got along with Colin Cowherd. Like, okay. that was it. I mean, we is went to Is it hard lunch. to get along with Colin Cowherd? No, I, I don't think so at all. <laughs> okay. It's so funny because... Well, some people love him, some people hate him. Right. And know? he's another one of those guys yeah. where I think the guy on the radio is a little different yeah. than the guy that I did TV with. Okay. Um, I, and maybe it's because he, you know, on the radio, he has no one in there with him to bounce things off. He's just a guy that's talking for three hours, yeah. which is a whole different set. And he's of, aggressive. He's, that's yeah. He's aggressive, got a lot of opinions. Yeah, yeah, like that's, yeah. you know, and then in there, it's sort of you have someone that's like calling you out or, or bouncing things off of. And that was it. Had lunch. Uh, did a quick audition as so I was leaving. So did they give you copy uh, to read or kind how of. They, they had us play some games. Um, like one of the what became a game, I guess a eventually. Twister. <laughs> yeah, I know. Can you imagine? Like, <laughs> yeah. take off your shirt. Come on in. <laughs> it's a twister. Like random. I don't even remember what the games ended up being on the real show, but just uh, the goofy stuff, like sports related goofy. Did they stuff. test your sports knowledge. No, that kind of stuff. They no. didn't. Okay. Although ten years before, I had stopped in. Um, actually, not even ten years in Bristol. When I was PBR yeah. in Worcester, Mass. Yeah. And Worcester. just to have a meeting. And they were like, well, you're not ready, blah, blah, blah. And I was okay. like, okay, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't well, know what I'm doing. Because that's the interesting thing. Like, we, we, <laughs> you're right. That's let, fine. Yeah, I know. <laughs> let me, I did a screen test where we auditioned for, to host a show. Yeah. And oh, um, yeah, we did. it was up against. <laughs> I uh, forgot. It was. I mean, I won't tell what it was, but it was terrible. but they were like they they didn't they hadn't decided what they wanted the host to be yet. So mm. they had different people from different. There were comedians, actors, like scientists, oh. experts, all kinds of different people. I, I don't know if like no, you're friends with the guy who got it. I am. Uh, is uh, Josh Wolf right? Uh, yes, that shark. Yeah, the, the, oh, the uh, the shark after, after dark. the dark. Shark after oh dark. yeah. Right, right. And so they brought well, all he, kinds he comes of people on. Sports on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he's yeah he's yeah, come okay. on. Yeah, and so oh, we we tried out for that, and uh, it was kind of interesting because like. We had never done an audition for a hosting thing right. before, and it was a two man thing. And we had a good time, and it was funny. But, uh, but uh, we were the only two men. We were yeah, the only I was going to say thing. that's interesting. And but it was like uh, 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 I wondered if for that, like you know, in the inception of those shows, if they're not really sure what they want, if they bring different that's kinds of people. Exactly like, right. Do they bring an actress? Do they bring someone who is a sports announcer? Do they bring? I feel like they brought a bunch of sports women in. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then they just kind of threw things at you to see how you would respond or right. ad lib or all that stuff. Then they made us have lunch together in the cafeteria to see if we would have a conversation. Then they asked me to write a list of like 10 things that I would change about the show. They, they, you and weird. the other people who were auditioning? I, I don't, I don't know. The, okay. I don't know what they asked them because I never saw anybody else. I actually yeah, – She just got not, the fucking job. Yeah. I don't, yeah. That's it, man. I don't she care. just booked Screw it. it. I don't yeah. care who those people were. She got it. Yeah. <laughs> got it. Boom. They and I was like, oh, okay. This is working. Yeah. yeah. So were you psyched when you got it? I was. I was pretty excited. I was yeah. like, okay, well, I'm, I'm moving to Connecticut. Okay. So that's interesting. <laughs> right. That's happening. Right. But yeah, I mean, it was like a, it was a big you, break. where were you living at the time? New York. New I York. was doing Michael K's show, oh, okay. radio, okay. and then Yes, right. and all that stuff. Yeah, it was But a, now it was they do big. it out here, the show, so, right? Oh, Sports Nation? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. They moved it at some point. I it's, was so happy. Well, you like, left and came back. I left and came back, okay. and when I left, the show was moving here. Oh, okay. Um, and I, I was moving to New York again for... The NBC stuff, and yeah. then when I was like, "All right, we're gonna figure out and go back and figure out how to make it work." Um, that was the best part. I was like, "I just I, please don't make me live in Connecticut again." I just I don't think I can. <laughs> hey, yeah. Beetle, I grew anywhere. Up there. I know. Uh, yeah, Come do on. you live there now? Me and Hernandez. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it's true. True. We, Hernandez. We noticed you're not there. Yeah, yeah I noticed yeah, you're not definitely. rushing back. I love Connecticut. <laughs> love it. Yeah, uh, this time of year it's yeah. lovely. <laughs> lovely. Is it? Uh, do you shoot over across from the Stable Center? Yep, LA Live. Yeah, it's great. It's a great spot. I know that's very that's very cool. We were down there for uh, Access TV. Access TV, right? Oh yeah. Like, you know, it's all built. I don't think I'd been there, and there's all these studios. And it's like this there. crazy right. brand new, there's so much space, and yeah. I don't even know half of it's used. It's a lot. Now, we in need the, to make it in happen. You coming back to Sports Nation, was it like, um, had the show changed? 
when you came um, back? Or yes, like- it had. Well, it had because they had um, just Max and Marcellus doing the show together. Okay. So it's definitely a different dynamic. Max is a very um, knowledgeable on a lot of things. Boxing, um, right? Isn't boxing he, yeah, he's a thing? huge boxing guy. Yeah, Been right. doing it his whole life. You know what? Right. It's uh, huge. About Max. Yeah. I, I remember when I was working at HMV, it was right when we got out of college. Yeah. I used to. I was into boxing. I used to watch his public access yep. show. <laughs> oh, he was like sixteen or something. He was yeah. a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, like, I remember he came into HMV one time to buy some DVDs, and I was like, "Hey, I like your show." <laughs> oh my god, I can't wait to tell him. <laughs> and, and, so he, much. and he was like, "Thanks a lot." Yeah, he's been working <laughs> since forever. But for real, he was like, right. that was he was a teenager who had sure. a boxing show on public access. Right. Yeah, he's, right, right, he's right, a right. hustler, like yeah. definitely New York kid. Yeah. Like, and he, but he's also not. Like a host, like he's not, you know, he's not a prompter guy, and he's not the guy who wants to do this. So it was, it's a, it was a different dynamic in that way. Is that you basically had those two, and not a real host, whatever you want to call that. And so it changed. I think it changed it a little bit yeah. in that way. And it seems um, like a lot of shows now are changing more. Maybe you found this out coming back, but there's this kind of more social media bent, and there's more viral oh, video gosh. bent. And if you guys, so you much guys, video. I mean, your your show seems to lend itself kind of to that, yeah. Anyway, because you aggregate videos from places. Yeah, we make fun of like bad shots, stupid shots. Yeah, all that stuff is great. Anything you can make fun of is awesome. Yeah, there's a lot of that all the time, every day. (laughs) Thanks, thanks, sports. Yeah, thank you, sports. And how often do you have guests on that show? Well, pretty much every day. Yeah, we have them every day. Last week was my favorite week in a long time because it was you know WrestleMania week, and we had a bunch of that kind of stuff on. Um, But yeah, especially here, I feel like. That should be the bonus right. of being in LA. We should have, have those a great here. guest every day. We saw Ronda theory. Rousey on yeah. that show. Yeah, because oh, Ke- we love Ronda. Yeah, Ronda. Kevin sent uh, sent us sent me a clip of you yeah. and Ronda Rousey. Yeah. Oh my god, I love yeah. her so much. When was that interview recently? No, well, that you've was, had her a couple of times though, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. that that last one I think was around uh, the Expendables time. Maybe, yeah, 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 I think. Yeah, right around that. Which, that's what you guys talked about. I mean, does anyone not like? That's the thing. I feel like she's crushing right now. Oh I my god! Anyone who has anything bad, literally to say. crushed. Like, she broke <laughs> that dude's ribs the other day. So good. We did a joke. Uh, we did Ron Riley's joke in, the, in our Super Troopers. We did campaign. Video. Well, it's funny because like. Uh, Oh, I guess I can't. Because I, I love her. Because I, I love well, her. Well, Ronda Rousey is slowly internally in the group. Is the, She doesn't know it, but she's making a push to get an offer for us to be in Super Troopers too. Well, you better hurry. Yeah. I know it. No, like Ronda Rousey would be great in this she's one particular busy, role. Yeah. Oh, they brought she's her out busy. in WrestleMania, and yeah. she flipped Triple H over. With The Rock, right? It was sure. so good. Wait, is that... Were you... That oh, wasn't what was... No, you that was... Like, you're a wrestling. Week. I love you're, wrestling. Yeah, yeah I just too. spent the whole last week... Um, and the weekend in San Jose, and I went to Mania and Raw last night. Oh, you did? And, yeah, well, this bad. feels pretty safe because, you know, like, we were going to have Rowdy Roddy Piper on the show. Oh! And, and ask him about, uh, you know, the real versus fake. Yeah. How real or fake is it? So in the sense that – and it's it's interesting because there's definitely – um, it, it used to be where, oh, my God, you would never say, like, oh, it's fake. Yeah, because it yeah. just wasn't. It was like, no, this is, this is real. Sure. And I think with the with reality television and social media, we sort of – know these guys aren't necessarily playing characters like they once did. There's still a couple old school guys that do characters. But for the most part, they're playing, like, amplified versions of themselves. Of themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so the scripting and the storylines is obviously all stuff that writers and a team comes up with. and But it's – and it's all entertainment. But the athleticism and all of that that goes into that is 100% sure. real. I mean, just mania alone, there was blo- there was a lot of blood. Guy had 10 staples put in his head after jumping into a ladder. Like, it's, you know, they hurt. And, he, sure. and if you need any further proof, just take a look at, like, the Hulk Hogan's and, and those guys walking now. It's, yeah, yeah. They're efforting pretty, yeah. pretty hard that was <laughs> to get anywhere. When I was growing up, like, I loved wrestling. Oh, I, yeah. My mom was surprised me. Because what happens is they would come through New Haven Coliseum. And then uh, you would, uh, uh, I would always go to the matches, you know, as a kid. Nice. And, and so, but there was always this ring, like right around the, the, the ring, like the first three rows. Yeah. And no matter how early I got online, <laughs> I couldn't get those fucking tickets. I couldn't get them. And then my mom found out that there was a waiting list. Oh, wow. And so without me knowing, she put me on the waiting list. Okay. And then like at one point she surprised me that we had the front row seats. No. Really? And so we were able to go and see the front row seats, and I, it was and? always amazing. And oh, it was great. Did somebody get thrown on you? No, but it was like, you know, like, um, uh, you know, they would, they would do the thing where they'd, you know, uh, rub salt in a guy's eyes and then throw the fucking bag down on the side, you know? Oh, and like, well, I'm the ref, I was going to grab the bag. Looking. I got to grab the bag. I got this all back. You know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know I mean, there's great stuff like that. But to me, it was always like people said, oh, it's fake, it's fake. I didn't Ugh. give a shit if it was fake. No. It was, you know, the superhero movies I watch are fake, too. Every you know? movie mm-hmm. we watch fun. is fake. But yeah. it's fun. But this was like, you know, honestly for me, and you and I have had the Santa Claus conversation a couple times. Yes. Uh, but like, <laughs> I believed the wrestling was real. Ah. Uh. And because I feel like when we were kids, it was, 
it was becoming big and pop, like Hulk Hogan and Andre the yeah. Giant mm-hmm. were yeah. in there and Superfly Snooker. Yeah. Right? That's the golden age, I think. Of, yeah. of oh, that's definitely when it. Those the, guys yeah. became superstars. Yeah. But I believed it. I thought it was real. Oh, okay. And when I found you're I, dumb. That's why. I, <laughs> I, did you always know it was fake? Uh, I, I always kind of had that feeling. I, I assume maybe when I was like five, I didn't know. But I mean, by the time you know, uh, we got into the into the Hulk Hogan's and the you know the Ric Flair era. I didn't, I didn't you know. know it was but fake. I loved it, like okay. Attitude Era and DX and NWO and all that. I, yeah. I like I loved all, Stone Cold Steve Austin's my favorite. Yeah. It's, Remember we got into an elevator one time with him. Have you met him? Uh, I've met him like through Twitter. Okay, I haven't officially met. We him. We were at Fox for something. Remember this? Were you uh-huh. with me? Oh my god! And we got it. We got, we were in the building of Fox. We got in the elevator and then hold up. And then he walks into the elevator and we're like, "Holy Ooh. shit!" Oh he's man, fuck, he was huge. Yeah, he's he was a big huge. Dude. But that was like, what was it the? What happened like a year ago or something? We found out John Cena was a fan of ours. That's right. And yeah. didn't we like? Yes. Didn't yeah. we have like a Twitter exchange with him or like? We an email did, exchange? and then we were gonna go do something. Uh, actually, I think. Jay and I were going to do something for like Baby Makers or something with Cena, and then we got bumped. Uh-huh. Uh, we got bumped on Raw yeah. for somebody else. Oh, they bumped come us on. out. Yeah. I would I like to know. know who it was because not yeah. all those choices have been great. True, true. I'm just going to say. <laughs> I'm just going to say. <laughs> Thank you. I'm yeah, just you're, welcome. Say. you're welcome. <laughs> and so, do you do things with those guys? Do you do, you do kind of like promotional stuff with not them? Not really. No? Like, they'll, they'll ask fan. me. I'm just a super fan, but they are so good to me. Like, I, I, I literally was the. F- Front row behind the announcers uh, at Mania. Oh, so she's one. She's yeah. One of the front I'm row. I'm on the front row. I you was like, front row. yeah. Last night I was right there. Like I was right behind Linda McMahon, which was crazy. Okay. Um, okay. And last night not was a crazy huge fan too. of Linda McMahon, but that's well, okay. I just I felt awkward because the chants were uh, they were a little graphic. Oh, they were. Night. Yeah, at, at they Linda were, McMahon. At the, no, okay. not at her. At the, oh, okay. at the divas. Oh, whoa. And I was like, oh god, this is actually really? kind of yeah. uncomfortable. And Linda's very conservative, so yeah. she maybe can't handle. Well, she had I think grandkids with her, so it was a little bit. It was a little much. Saying like. Like misogynistic type of comments. Yeah, they were basically <laughs> talking about the sexual activities of the different divas and their wrestler boyfriends or husbands, okay. and it was that's it was loud. Okay, that's sort of been yeah, okay. a, that's been in vogue lately in WWE. Yeah, yeah, well, the chanting is oh, dating each other. No, no, oh. but like, uh, <laughs> like I, yeah, yeah, <laughs> sure, why not? yeah. <laughs> that too. Yeah. yeah, but like I feel like recently there oh, was the something about like are... somebody made fun of somebody's girlfriend and that caused. A big uh, man on oh, one. Oh, well, yeah. that's like, right, right, right. So that's right. not always fake, by that. the way. Like, that's one of those parts of wrestling that um, a lot of times is where it kind of crosses over into reality. I was listening right. to a podcast last night, actually, that was about that. And, like, back in the day with Edge and Lita and all this stuff. And these, you know, two were actually dating in real life. And then she ended up with the other one in ah. real life. And so that sort of spills over into the rest. So it's like, oh, that becomes very that personal happens. all of a sudden. You know, and right. these people are on the road 300 days a year. They're all going to date each other. Yeah, like, sure. That's how it is. I had a major crush on uh, Tori Wilson. Oh, oh she, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. that's but a good one. Way before like, she was dating A-Rod. A-Rod is actually what got me to not, uh, I was sad that she was dating <laughs> it A-Rod. It ruins everything, doesn't it? It does. He what really are you guys talking about? I love A-Rod. But I, like, oh, stop it. I love him. Nobody I, does. Do you like I hope he has 50 <laughs> home runs this year. I hope he plays all every game and it's 50 home runs this year. That's sure, I hope. I actually hope. I, hope. I hope that too. I hope that that's too. What I hope. I just hope for the chaos of that. That yeah. would be. Cr- that's just going to be a lot. I mean, but the, the you just put it in everybody's face. I hope so. That. What I did, steroids. Take this. <laughs> I <laughs> honestly that hope that. I hope oh. that happens. I hope that happens. Yeah. I also hope he does only because we need to clean up it or two. Yeah, well, go ahead. Yes. Yes. we do. Yes, go I go hope he makes out with himself uh, for GQ magazine. <laughs> he right is. Now. He's the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> he really is. Just when you think he's like, all right, you're in the clear, a rod. <laughs> We're talking about something. He says something yeah. stupid or he does something stupid. And you're like, oh. the guy cannot get out of his he own way. Cannot. He just cannot. It's unbelievable. I've never. But seen there's something watch- interesting about that. To yeah, me. it's like watching a train wreck. Yeah, it, but he's also it, it super nice. fucking talented. Yeah, he's so goddamn talented. We'll see what he's got. Unbelievable. We'll he's been away from the game for a while. He has. He I know has. he's already hit some home runs. He's hitting some home runs in the preseason. Yeah. I'm really excited to. I got my red shirt back out. But oh go- wow. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you got it out. You, yeah, it's out. It's out. He forgives. That's uh, the nice thing about Kevin. That's, he forgives. That's really well, nice. As of you. fans, we forget, right? Isn't no, that we do we not. Do? Isn't that? No, we don't. We don't. <laughs> no, I do not. We don't nope, do that. I never do. No? I'm the worst. But maybe because I'm Italian, that might be that. Maybe we never. But forgive. you know, Mark Albert's forget. back on the air. And, uh, oh yeah, we forget. Yeah. Oh, you mean we? We. Oh right, right, right. Society. As a society. Did you say we put Marv Albert back on the air? Yeah, I did. I did. What was this thing like? I worked with him. He was into like. Did you? Yeah, he's a nice guy. Yeah, he's super nice guy. Paper all night. He bit great. some. He was biting, biting back. He bit right? some woman. Yeah, 
in the, in a hotel room. That's somewhere. not, you know, I don't think that's anybody's that the, business. You know, salt is not a big deal. It's not a shit of salt. <laughs> oh, bit her like that. I thought it was like yeah. the, no, I thought it was like sexy consensual. time. Yeah. I think it was a. I think it where that was the issue. And he whether to, it crossed the line of uh, oh sexy time to a salty time. Sexy time. <laughs> <laughs> salty time. With a Mark salty Albert. time is a little different time. <laughs> that okay? You know, that's that? a different story. That's a different time. two different times. Yeah, two different times. But I don't want to besmirch Marv Albert. I'm just saying, you know, there was a time where you thought you would never be back in the air, and he got back in the air pretty quickly. That's true. Sure, I feel. Yeah, right. You're right. It's like Ray Rice might be playing football again. Who the hell knows? I don't know about that one. Probably will be. I mean, you never know. I mean, he was at the end of his career anyway, kind of. That's the only reason why he might not. But yeah, Yeah. I just somebody will. Maybe. Who knows? You know my position on the Ray Rice versus Adrian Peterson thing. What is it? Well, I, I, it's I, I, I think what Adrian Peterson did was worse because interesting because a child is. I mean, it's, they're both awful. Right. They're both awful. Yeah, that's the problem. Once you're saying this, you need to qualify. Like, they're, yeah, there's levels. Other, that's the problem. But he put his uh, three-year-old kid in the hospital. Sure. Beating him with a stick. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Which to me, like Terrible. having a three-year-old kid now, I'm not saying- Can you even imagine? Yeah. No, I can't imagine. Right. No, yeah. I can't. So. But when Michael Vick was the came, went over to the Jets- you were kind of into that, weren't you? No, oh, see, I I ju- that's when I stopped being a I Jets wasn't fan. into it at all. Okay. I wasn't <laughs> yeah. into it at all, but not because I had a problem. Okay, with- but I know people who were excited when he went to the Eagles. I know that, too. Even though we thought they never would work again. I watched fights, Ever. I watched fights between uh, uh, an Eagles fan and a pit bull lover. <laughs> okay. That you were there sure. for. Yep. What do you mean you watched fights between I, well, arguments about arguments? Yeah, about not like in the ring or anything like that. Kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was. Uh, it was like uh, you know, hey, he apologized. We're like, I'm a, uh, do- yeah. I'm a dog lover, and you know, like that's I how. I, that's how. But I let me point him. this out about a Rod. He only did it to himself. That's the th- that's the thing about steroids. <laughs> mean, made out, care. made out with himself. Yeah, and but and, and I don't care about that. Yeah. If my my thing's always been, look, if you want to put stuff in your body and possibly be dead by the age of fifty, yeah. then I that's not my problem. Yeah. Like you, you are an adult; you can decide sure, for and yourself. You assume the risk of getting right. Caught. I do not care at all. I will never be one who makes a big deal of it. I don't know why we decided that that was the thing we're going to hang our hat on. Yeah, yeah. well, and also, uh, you know, because there have been a lot of arguments. I mean, there are a lot of questions about things like uh, you know corrective eye surgery and uh, yeah, sure, you know, any sort of what is cheating? It's all enhancing. If right. That's you know. Right, performance sure. enhancing. Just where you that. do draw the line. That's yeah, all. yeah. Well, and then if everybody is else doing it, why can't I do it? Right, and sure. then because that's the problem. Like if you're doing it, you get caught, but you know these other guys are doing it. And what are you supposed to? do? You can't right. say anything. But that's the weird thing is that once it's criminalized, in the sense of not criminalized, but criminalized in this right industry, and they start testing you for it, and then you keep doing it. Yeah, no, that's sure. the definition of crazy. Yeah, that's just dumb. That's and the definition of and crazy. you deny it when you've been caught right-handed. <laughs> Right. And then you apologize, but right. you don't really. Mean I love that. apologies; they're so <laughs> meaningful. They are good. Now Ortiz <laughs> went on a big thing last week. David Ortiz. Oh yeah, he did. Where he went all fucking bananas because uh, you know uh, he's had the specter of the thing, and he came out in the Mitchell report, and then finally he, <laughs> he spoke out on Derek Jeter's. Uh, By the way, that uh, thing's taken off. Oh, it's unbelievable. Players Tribune taken yeah. off. Yeah, I mean, we all laughed at it when it first, and now we're like, oh, well, wow, especially because okay. like it's funny because when you read about the yeah. media's take on it, like if you're in the sports coverage business which you're in yeah people are mad that there's they're taking the filter away well and i also think media especially those who covered the the yankees for so long were sort of like wait Derek jeter who don't get me wrong played the game perfectly sure. gave the answers he was supposed to but yeah. was never the guy who sort of opened up right or, you know That's he, said, he was smart right. no he was That's smart I loved the he was brilliant that he way. didn't give he didn't give all. them anything but now he's giving the all these athletes right. like this place to sort it's of it's like the ultimate screw you it's, it is it's actually quite funny it's like and I am so really powerful working. that I am starting this website and it's going to get people <laughs> and to be able everyone, to say every yeah. athlete's doing like an article yeah or a, I'm a little surprised yeah. actually I still think David Ortiz is terrible but, probably but that's okay. yeah but we can't say anything <laughs> like what are we going to do he's never no one's ever going to admit it no but he's in the report he you said, if I tested positive, then it well, was a false positive. Well, and his quote is, yeah, his yeah. quote has, and even last week, it was like, I never knowingly, yeah. that's that word, it's always yeah, in there, and you, you cover the, yourself. Yeah, but I that's know. the admission. I know. As well. I never I'm just saying, it gets to that point where everyone, you know, a lot of people have done it. So for me to villainize a yeah. wonderful talent like A-Rod. No, God. I, yeah, I don't like it for do other that. reasons. Not, not I for will the not do that. <laughs> well, it's the truth. It's the truth. And by I the way, I want to see number thirteen digging into the box oh, in the four slot and hitting fifty home runs. Sure, sure. fifty home runs. That's what yeah. I want. I also there's a hypocrisy. Like I, I don't like. You know, we have some friends who are Chicago fans who talk sure. about like, you know, Mark McGuire and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and even Sammy Sosa and and you know, the truth of the matter is they captivated America for a it summer. It was the last time I was truly, truly invested. Really? It was amazing. Yeah. It was amazing. It was amazing. People that had zero interest in baseball knew what was, what was going on. We all talked about it. Yeah, we did. 
It's still a little weird, but yes. It absolutely is, yeah, but yeah. but we all watched I, I remember we plenty did. of times yeah. watching it. Yeah. We did. And and people who maybe knew or didn't know didn't care. They were so into what was going on and it's after you know, when everything came out was when they started. So to, what we're saying is cut A Rod some slack. What we're saying is who cares what these guys do? <laughs> what I'm saying is Tori Wilson <laughs> was fucking hot. <laughs> she still is, by the way. Her body's incredible. Is she still with A Rod? No, God no. Oh God! No, no, no! He's back with Cammy right now. What was he, what's he doing? These he's days? with Cameron Diaz. I don't know. He's no. with, he's with again, Cameron. No, again. she got married to that the the one of those twin good Charlotte people or something. What oh, is it? Benji? right, Tori right, Benji right. Madden. No. Oh, Cameron right, Diaz. right, right. Oh, she's married now. Yeah, she just went off and did it. Where have I been? Right. Just crazy style. Right. I like it. Damn. That's smart though. I eloped. That's I. That's why would anyone not do that? I had a party. I had a big party. We did. About? It was a fun wedding, too. Yeah, thank you. But did you do like a thing where you planned it for a year, or did you just... Uh, we plan- Yeah, well, we planned it for a while, and then um, the place that we planned it at went bankrupt. Oh, and so we had to right. we had to My regroup. God. Because they took your Late deposit. Yeah, I was going to say, did you give a deposit? Well, this is a little... Maybe, I don't want to bore anyone, but <laughs> <laughs> essentially... Well, the, well, you're about to. The <laughs> catering side of the business did not go out of... Business. It's the the function hall. You got five. Oh. You got five seconds to spice this up. So they moved the uh, <laughs> deposit over to the catering side, and they countered against the food. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you, thank Good you, job. thank you, thank you, everybody. <laughs> thank you, everybody. <laughs> Good job. He he and his this wife. Is... He and his wife did a routine. They did who's on first. Shut. We did who's as, on first. as they're in place of a first dance, right? In place of a first dance, we did who's on first. That's so good. Yeah. Well, she was like, let's do something different than a first dance. I was like, well, you want to do like, <laughs> like a bit or something? And she's not, you know, she's in not business. Yeah. She's, not a, she's like, you want to do a bit or something? I was like, yeah, let's do a bit. A you bit. Know? I like and talking so to her about she, that I was like, bit. what kind of bit? She's like, she's like, who's on first or something? They like, oh, yeah, who's on first? <laughs> and so we, we watched it and so learned good. it and did it. Yeah. Well, and there were maybe a few hiccups along the way. Not on my end. No, I know, and that's the problem. <laughs> Our professional. Yeah, you are. You are. Professional. What's uh, Katie? Well, how long have we been? How are we going? Help partner out. It's one twenty. You okay. talk to his wife about the who's on first thing, and she does not break out into a smile. She'd be like, "Oh no!" Be like, yeah, it was. Yeah, we had a pretty good time. It was okay. It was good. No, the, <laughs> the funny, the funny part was we got we got married. Like they had the ceremony. Yeah. In my in her parents' yard, and we ended up going behind the house. Like you know, you walk the procession off, and then so the two of us are back there, and she was like, "All right, before I go in there, let's practice real quick." I was like, oh, "Let's oh. practice it, right?" And so there we are, we're practicing. Who's on first, right? <laughs> and her, from her father's, her father tells us a story. Like his fa- her father walked back to say congratulations to us, and looked and saw us fighting with each other oh, from a distance. Oh, so you're doing yeah, yeah. Because we were first, and he felt terrible because we were already fighting. We had been married five <laughs> seconds. We were already fighting, <laughs> but what he didn't know is we were practicing who's on first. It's just a bit. We're doing first. a bit. We're doing a bit. That's actually kind of a cool idea. We're doing a bit. First dance is a little weird. It is. The idea of that's weird. Yeah. It is. Because the other thing is, uh, her her dad wanted to do the first dance, and we did it anyway. And then he's like not like a music guy. Like he doesn't quite get it right. And so he he said, "I really have this song that I really want to do the first dance to." And she's like, "Okay, let's do it." And he's like, "Well, yeah, I don't know if you're like, but I'm, I want to do it. So don't say anything about it. Okay, let's do it. It's raining men. No, <laughs> that would no, be great. No." It was the Muzak version oh, no. of I Just Called to Say I Love You, the Stevie Wonder uh-huh. thing. <laughs> but it wasn't the Stevie Wonder. <laughs> it wasn't even Stevie Wonder one. It was some Muzak version <gasps> that he bought on like NPR Does he even know like about that. the real Stevie Wonder? No, Wonder? probably not. <laughs> probably not. He just heard something in an elevator and Shazammed it. He's like, this is the greatest piece of <laughs> yeah. music. What, what is this sound? <laughs> I'm going to dance happened. to this. <laughs> And that's what I happened. love that though. That's what happened. Like, I love that visual. That's what happened. I got this one song. I got this one song. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. So we're one twenty. We are we are we gonna wrap up? Sure. Should we, we can, wrap up. Sure. Scout's sleeping. I um. <laughs> let Scout? me look and see if there's anything else I got to talk to Beetle about. I hit it oh, all. Man. Well, if you look see. at my list, I we did WWE. On here. Yeah, we I got it all that. on here. I wanted to talk about the the greatest road trip because the, that uh, yeah the ultimate road trip craziest craziest people but ever. But that is the first. Like I, I realized it. Uh, in retrospect, that is the first place that I saw you. That was yeah. Because I wanted to. Saw I wanted to do that. I wanted you wanted to be like a participant. Yeah. I mean, they they gave up a year of their lives basically. Yeah. Yeah. Which is crazy to me. I, I couldn't imagine. I mean, it's not even like I had a big career at that point, but I was like, I couldn't imagine just walking away for a year. Yeah. yeah. But they didn't. So okay, so that was it. Some wasn't like filmed that. over like a period of like no, a month or anything. They like were that. at every, 162 cause, games because the first season because they oh, did. Yeah. I forgot how many yeah. seasons we did, but the very first season they went to all 162 games, all four of them. Then the second season, I think we started making them compete. Like you weren't guaranteed tickets to every game, but you had to travel and be there for every game. And right. then like we would get to say Baltimore and, and do some sort of a challenge. And I'd be like, all right, you two win the challenge. You two are going to the game. And the other two were just like, you know, hanging out until the game was over until we go to the next place. And I was just like, that's a lot to ask someone to do. Sure. Like I couldn't imagine. Yeah. But if you're a diehard, I exactly. Guess that's, that's what well, it is. Totally different. Okay. So now how does that, because we've gone on the road, we've done live 
comedy yeah. and toured around. And as yeah. cliche as it sounds, touring is hard. How do you find that? <laughs> I don't like it. It's, I don't like traveling. Do you, you get know, exhausted? I'm kind of over it. Yeah. yeah, I just, I, I, I'm so comfortable now. I have my home. I have my boyfriend. I have my dogs. I'm just like, I don't want to be gone. Yeah. I just want to be yeah. home. It's like, I, and I'm sure there are phases where you sort of get antsy and you're like, oh, and, yeah. a, and a cool road trip pops up. Like, and you're like, oh, this will be fun. Yeah, I'll do that. Um, yeah, but it's weird. I find myself now sort of like, Mm, home body I don't really want to. that's what we do and yeah. then we go out for one weekend and then Lemmy gets really drunk on the first night god why are you the so first night amateur. he gets so drunk because he forgot he's like <laughs> he oh forgot. I've been on the road in like three months you haven't been training what first are you night doing? out I'm drunk I'm blacked out <laughs> It's, out. And then, the, and then, I, what I black out is that I turn to the left of me, and Kevin is just as drunk <laughs> on Thursday night. Like this is why we did. No, we had one. We've told the story, but it was uh, we were at some date in uh, Kansas City. Kansas City, the first show of the year. We'd been off for like two or three months. We always we have a like no accepting shots from the audience policy, and we oh, that's know that smart. Thursday yeah. night is like Friday night is the night we allow ourselves to go out. Okay. We don't have to wake up the next day. And, Perfect. Uh, but like by the time I got on stage, Kevin had already done – like there were eight empty shot glasses in oh, front of him. Of what? Uh, like what's the uh, shot usually? Who knows? Oh, Tequila, God. Jägermeister. Whatever they send you. Yeah. Whatever they send you. And then so there were eight, eight full ones next to his that were just <laughs> waiting for me. And so like I, eight. I was firing them off. Maybe not. Maybe six. I yeah. don't even know. Who That's knows? A lot. Yeah, a lot. A shitload. It was, it was tough. But I was like firing them off. <laughs> And I blacked out like 15 minutes. Oh, my right. God. On stage, he blacked out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How does that, so how does the rest of that go? Well, the, the, uh, he starts, you know, he starts having a good time. It's, the, the thing's going, bit, the bit's going great. The crowd's drunk, he's drunk, everyone's a great time. Perfect. The owner comes out, who's kind of a dick, and he was like, get him off the stage right now. Uh-uh. And I was like, he's doing his routine. What do you, he's like, get him off. I gotta, I'm closing the show. Get him off the stage. And I'm like, look, if I walk on that stage... It's going to be another 15 minutes of him making fun of me for coming on the stage to get him. <laughs> he's like, oh, I don't care. So I went on the stage, and I was like, the guy wants you to get off stage. And he's like, oh, okay. my God. And then he went on for whatever. And so it didn't. It was a total backfire. Yeah, the show was actually pretty good. Yeah. I mean, the well, joke, how do you know if the show was pretty good? Uh, they told me. Okay, good, good. <laughs> it was pretty good. But yeah. then you remember what happened? We went to the, the thank you line, Yeah. right, to say goodnight, where we go out of the lobby, shake oh, hands right. with everybody, sign posters and stuff. And um, <laughs> and it's like, this, there's the only thing that I've been told about this night. I'm hoping it's not what he's going to say. Who it is. Uh, oh, and so it is. you know, the, you see the people coming up the line or whatever, and I see this woman who is not a woman, and she's a man, and uh, <laughs> she was a ver- fan, but yeah. she was uh, she was a dude, yeah, and uh, big, uh, you know, Adam's apple, <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff, big. And so uh, she came up, and I gave her a hug, very nice, blah blah blah, and then. Oh no! Lemmy was just so oh, excited, no. I, and they went and they started like she went in for the kiss, and Lemmy gave her a big kiss, and, and oh. like no, I don't think I don't think you knew. I it got very sexual. <laughs> it got really sexual. But that's like that's like one of the ones where like the next day you're like whoa, and you know he's like man, you got fucked up. I was like I know what the hell, <laughs> Jesus Christ! And then like it's the details start to come out. They're like right. you oh, know yeah. you were like. Kissing a tranny. You were making out. <laughs> what? I was. God, that's, you got a video. This is what cameras are for. It. It's what I our phones it. do now. I know. Because yeah. you might not believe, and I would mm. want you to see all this. That's oh yeah, no, that's what <laughs> that's what friends are for too. <laughs> that's what friends make, are for to make you feel yep. like a dick. To make you see what you sure. did, and then we'll talk about. But it. she was super nice. He, she, he was super hey, listen, nice. We're all people from the planet Earth. She was people from the planet Earth. Thank you, fan. Thank you, sister. And she deserved to be kissed by you. Damn right. There you go. You're right. I there bet you, you made go. her very happy. Actually. You probably did. I hope yeah. I did. You probably yeah. did. I hope I did. Good for you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, all right. Okay. <laughs> Beatles got to get out of her. Mom's in town. Oh, the gosh. dogs are going crazy. I She's been dogs. working all day. Do you ever like have like uh, your cup of coffee? Does it say Beetlejuice on it? Mm. What's up? Okay. What's wait, a... that, did he just high five me? Yeah. Even though that was not good. Yeah. High five. <laughs> you know what? Let me uh, tell you on the podcast. So you even saw on the way home, you're going to be snickering to yourself. Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. Get it? Do you get it? That's a good one. Yeah. No, I don't drink coffee. What is wrong with me you? Me either. Me either. Me We're either. just naturally awesome people, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't I like it. addiction. I actually, Water. I pity people who drink coffee. It's I, sweet. I'm Katie, the opposite. I always coffee? feel like I'm missing out. No, okay. Good. Oh, it's so weird. Like yeah. four people in one room. Yeah. The thing weird. is, I actually do think coffee is delicious. Like the times like the, I've gone for it. The few times where I'm like, okay, that's delicious. Yeah, I think like it's my, right. my wife will do that like- uh, Smells good. Uh, international uh, mm. coffee, f- general foods. The commercial. <laughs> she does like Cafe Vienna. Well, she yeah, yeah. different flavors. Cafe Vienna. Yeah, and I smell, I'm like, oh, that smells like Austria. It smells delicious. I like it. Okay. 
And I've had like, you know, a vanilla latte on yeah. ice and I like it. Okay. But I just I don't, I never feel like it's doing anything. Yeah. So, but I do feel left out because I always feel like, oh, I can't start my day without my coffee. And I'm like, what's that like? Yeah, but I don't buy that. Like, I, 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 I see the other uh, fathers drop their kids off at school and they're walking around with like a ceramic mug, you know, <laughs> like they, they have to, they had to bring their coffee mug to the schoolyard. <laughs> yeah. I'm always like, come on. Or the, really? Like, or the, start the day. Don't yeah. talk to me until I have my right. coffee. Right. I can't even deal. Uh, I don't like that. My, 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 <laughs> I have an hour where I can be an asshole to you. Yeah. <laughs> like, my wife's a headache person. Like, you know, she'll oh. get a headache from not having coffee. And you're like, come so on. So she's been drinking it for a while. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's, that's the thing. I didn't know that about her. Yeah, she's a headache. My she best friend's it. that way. It's yeah. like, it's weird. Yeah. Yeah. I don't accept it. And I don't... I, I, I don't accept it. It's I, in your head. I don't respect it. I don't... I don't, I don't, I don't respect that. <laughs> it's so weak. Okay. Well, you know, we all have our vices. This problems. should be like a new I'm thing a we, take this, we take this cause on. Yeah. Like, we don't buy this. <laughs> anti, we don't buy caffeine anti- addiction. Coffee? Yeah. I we'll call ourselves, uphill battle. We'll call ourselves the pack. People against coffee. Oh, oh my God. Now I Are we back? Now are we back? Are we back? Hello? <laughs> don't leave me hanging, bro. Are we back? Don't leave me hanging. No, I just need to get our thing back. That was a good one. That was a good one. Um, okay, let's chew it on the do way out. Ever, do, oh. you ever, do you ever do a segment called uh, "Beetle a Dead Horse"? Nope, not high five. Come on, that. don't high five. Gonna look across yeah. at you. Yeah, let's we're do just it. Gonna, let's do I it. had her. Don't chew it on the way out. Don't break. <laughs> let's chew. Beetle, thank you for joining us. <laughs> Thanks for having what a great me. time! Thank this you. This is awesome. When you were uh, growing up, did people call you Dung Beetle? <laughs> what? What? No. <laughs> Not even like uh, like the bullies at school or anything like that. No, they call me Bird Legs. Beetle, I nothing to do Beetle with my Bailey. Name. Beetle Bailey. Oh, Beetle Bailey. Yes. There you go. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Here's to A Rod hitting 50 home runs this year. Woo! Let's do it. Um, all right. Talk to everyone later. Now leaving Nerdist.com.